it's very important to see math prerequisites because uh, before uh, seeing quantum computing uh, we begin with uh, complex numbers note that uh, that uh, math uh, is uh, an accessible way uh, to see uh, prerequisites about uh, quantum computing so we don't develop uh, anything it's uh, the minimum for uh, to understand in, to understand in quantum computing so what is uh, the first uh, it's uh, very important to know the form of a complex number so a complex number z has the form z equals a plus bi z equals a plus bi uh, i is uh, the imaginary number verify that i squared equals minus i minus one so i squared equals minus one what is a a is called the real part and b is the imaginary part and b is the imaginary part we need to know how can we represent our complex number by using geometry called geometrical representation we have two axes that axis represent the imaginary part and that axis represent the real part and this is our our complex number z that complex number of course equals a plus bi if you do a projection so for this is our imaginary axis and our real axis and if we do here a projection we project to the real axis we obtain the real part a z equals a plus bi this is the real part if you project do a projection so we have project that on the imaginary axis we obtain the imaginary part b and this is the geometrical representation now what is the magnitude of a complex number so if you want uh, the magnitude of a complex number or the thing that we use is Pythagorean theorem so we use of course that geometrical representation and of course from here to here this is the magnitude of our complex number so by using Pythagorean theorem we have we have z squared equals a squared plus b squared a squared plus b squared then if we want the magnitude z is quite simply the square root of a squared plus b squared we have some examples so here this is uh, some examples of a complex number if you want to calculate uh, the magnitude of z1 
the magnitude of z1 equals quite simply the square root of the real part of that number which means 1 squared plus the real part squared of of uh, my number which me that number which means 1 squared plus the imaginary part here 1 squared and that equals square root of 2 for z2 the magnitude of z2 equals square root of 2 the real part squared plus the imaginary part squared which equals square root of 2 4 plus 4 square root of 2 8 which equals 2 so this is square root of 2 4 times 2 which equals square root of 4 times square root of 2 and and square root of 4 equals 2 so this is 2 times square root of 2 now the magnitude of z3 equals square root of 2 now uh, square root of 3 squared plus 3 squared which equals square root of 9 plus 9 which equals square root of 18 which equals square root of 9 times 2 which equals square root of 9 times square root of 2 which equals 3 times square root of 2 another example with an imaginary part negative imaginary part here the real part of z4 equals 1 and the imaginary part of z4 equals minus 3 so the magnitude of z4 equals square root of 1 the real part squared plus the imaginary part squared which means minus 3 squared that equals square root of 1 plus 9 which equals square root of 10 after that we have what we called Euler notation now uh, it's time for uh, the complex conjugate of a complex number and the magnitude so imagine you have uh, a complex uh, number z equals a plus bi then the complex conjugate of that number denoted by z star or z bar is so if z equals that then the complex conjugate of z denoted by z star or z bar is all the things that we have to do if we have that form exactly a real part plus imaginary part times i then all the things that we have to do is to add a minus here so this is a this is z star or z bar equals a minus b i pay attention if you have for example a certain number z equals 3 i uh, plus uh, 4 minus 5 i if i want z star i must write that by my, the form of a complex number which means i plus b i so before to do that calculate that this is 4 minus 2i then z star equals 4 
and you add minus a year minus with minus is plus so this is for that example this is that so by using this we can calculate the the squared magnitude of a complex number which or the the magnitude squared if you want actually the magni the magnitude squared is quite simply the complex number times complex conjugate which equals a plus bi times a minus bi and if we develop this calculation we find a squared plus b squared which equals z squared so the magnitude is square root of z z star so examples imagine z1 equals 1 plus i then the z1 star equals 1 minus i then z1 times z1 star equals 1 squared plus 1 squared which equals 2 and this is z1 squared of course and z1 equals the magnitude is square root of 2 the same thing for if you have for example a certain number z2 equals 2 minus 3i then z2 star equals 2 plus 3i and z2 times z2 star equals 2 squared plus minus 3 squared which equals or uh, directly 3 squared is not a problem 4 plus 9 which equals 13 so that squared equals 13 then z2 equals square root of 13 and this is it Uh, so uh, now we have what we call Euler notation. Uh, here uh, we need the, the geometrical representation of a complex number. So we have our imaginary axis, our real axis and our complex number z that part is the real part so this is a this is the imaginary part this is b so this is the imaginary axis and actually this is a set in origin of course this is our complex number z which equals a plus bi and that angle is called phi we call we then know this is this notation so here using trigonometry if you want the a the a we have here a triangle this is a right triangle this is a and this is b and this is phi and this is the z the magnitude of our complex number z So uh, now, if I want a, 
A is quite simply the, hypot the hypotenuse, hypotenuse Z times cosine phi because it's adjacent and for B it's hypotenuse times because B is op opposite to phi so Z times sinus phi so we can rewrite our complex number by using that form therefore Z equals the magnitude of Z times cosine phi plus I times the magnitude of Z sinus phi and that equals the magnitude of Z times cosine phi plus I sinus phi and we have a notation called Euler notation so this is the magnitude of Z times the exponential of I phi not that so where the cosine phi plus i sine phi equals exponential of i phi so here the trigonometric form of a complex number is z equals the magnitude of z times exponential of i phi and phi is called the argument of the complex number Z and if you want now to calculate the squared magnitude of Z so Z the complex conjugate of Z which means Z star equals Z times exponential minus I phi we add minus then z times z star equals z exponential of i phi times z exponential of minus i phi which equals z squared times exponential of i phi exponential minus i phi And that equals and exponential of zero is one so this is z squared actually I can directly write that equals z squared because it is trivial okay so uh, after seeing the part uh, about uh, complex uh, numbers uh, and uh, vectors now it's time for matrices uh, what is uh, uh, a, ma a matrix uh, here because uh, we already uh, told you that my goal is to simplify so uh, I don't want to use a complex uh, notation in maths so for me a matrix is a table with a number of columns and uh, 
uh, rows. So introduction, in that introduction we have just a definition about uh, what is a matrix uh, in uh, what is a matrix uh, a very easy definition about matrix so one introduction a matrix is a table with a certain number of uh, columns and rows with a number of columns and rows of course we have some uh, examples so examples uh, if you have uh, imagine that you have a certain matrix a equals uh, the first element is 1 the second element is 2 1 minus 1 so here we have that first row the second row first column the second column so this is a 2 2 matrix which means a matrix with two rows and two columns so this is a matrix with two columns and two rows we have another example x equals 0 1 1 0 this is a matrix also with uh, uh, so with two rows uh, and uh, two columns another example uh, a matrix with uh, for example three rows one three rows one zero two three minus one zero so we have that row that row and the third row but how many columns that we have we have the first columns and the second columns so this is a matrix this is a matrix with three rows and two columns as you can see of course we have uh, we have another example if you want we can have a matrix with three rows and uh, two columns for example also uh, as you can see here the element of each matrix here is a is a pure real number but in general the element of a matrix is a complex number for example we can have 1 plus i for the first element we can ha have here I, we can have 5, 4, 0, 2i, square root of 2, we can have pi if we want, we can have uh, exponential something if you want, uh, for example, uh, Euler notation of exponential, for example, i pi over 2 if you want, but actually this is a matrix here, a matrix with three rows and three columns okay uh, imagine uh, that uh, you want to denote a certain matrix 
So, for example, uh, the matrix A, that matrix is a 2 2 matrix. 2 2 matrix, uh, which means we have 2 rows and 2 columns. 2 rows and 2 columns. If you want, you can do this also. Two rows and two columns. But here we add the notation M, for example. For example, a matrix with two rows and two columns is denoted by that. And we can also denote it by this if you want. After that, we have matrix addition. We're still with matrices. Now it's time for matrix addition. Matrix addition. Uh, we have uh, to add uh, to matrices, uh, there is a very important condition. The matrices must have the same dimensions, meaning they must have the same number of rows and the same number of columns. Examples. If you have a matrix A equals 1, minus 3, 5, 4, if you, want, uh, if, if you consider another matrix B, this is a 2-2 two, two matrix, the B must be also a 2 2 matrix if you want to add those two matrices. So B, for example, B equals 0, 2, 1, 3. And now the addition is possible. Then A plus B equals, we have 1 minus 3, 5. 4 plus 0, 2, 1, 3. That equals uh, the result. Actually, the result is also a 2 2 matrix. So 1 plus 0 equals 1, minus 3 plus 2 equals minus 1, 5 plus 1 equals 6, 4 plus 3 equals 7. So this is our result of addition of two matrices. Uh, other example we have C equals and D equals, then C plus D equals I minus plus minus I equals zero, zero plus one equals one, two I plus five equals five plus two I, this is a complex number, 2 plus 1 equals 3, 9 plus minus 3 equals 6, 7 plus 2 equals 9, 4 plus 3 equals 7, 1 plus 1 equals 2, 3 plus 2 equals 5. This is it. After that, we have a matrix multiplication. After seeing 
matrix addition now it's time for matrix multiplication uh, actually the matrix uh, multiplication uh, uh, is not like a matrix addition we have another condition uh, the multiplication of two matrices uh, is not like uh, the multiplication of two numbers it's very normal for you that for example five times 3 equals 3 times 5 if you have two numbers for example but if you have for example a certain matrix A and you multiply that matrix by another matrix B in general AB is different to BA uh, therefore the multiplication of two matrices is not commutative. Uh, if we want to multiply two matrices, there is a very important condition. For example, if you have if uh, A is an M n matrix and b is n so something here p matrix here that number actually that number is the number of Coulombs for that matrix. So here the product AB is defined only if you have here N. So this is the number of rows for that matrix. So that product is possible only if we have here n and here n which means the same number the rule of multiplying two matrices is multiplying each row's element of the first so each row element of the first matrix by each corresponding coulombs element of the second matrix and summing the product which means that element times that element plus that element times that element plus that element times that element and sum in the product we have examples of course this process is repeated for each row in the first matrix so for that row for that column for example for that row for that column etc resulting is a new matrix that is the product of the new of the two original matrices the resulting matrix will have dimensions equal to the number of rows in the first matrix and the number of columns in the second matrix which means for example here The result is for AB, AB this is an MP matrix. It looks like we have that MN and NP. That N disappear with that P and the result is that. This matrix multiplication is a fundamental operation in linear algebra and is used in many areas of mathematics, science, engineering, and computer science, and here in quantum computing exactly. If you want to understand, it's very important to see examples. Examples consider A equals 1, 2, 2, 0. 
and b equals 2116 first that matrix is a 2 2 matrix that matrix is a 2 2 matrix and because we have here 2 and here 2 so the product is possible product or uh, multiplication is possible yes product is possible product is possible and what is the result so here if you want to do that product to calculate that product it's very simple so the rule is row by column here is our example so here a times b which equals 1 2 2 0 times 2 1 1 6 equals so we have that first row with that first column here we have one for the first element one times that two plus two times that one and after that if you want that element here the rule is that one that row times that column which means one times one plus two times 6 and after that we have that row so we have 2 times 2 also uh, that row by that and that row by that so we have 2 times 2 plus 0 times 1 2 times 1 plus 0 times that 6 and the result is 1 times 2 plus 2 equals 4 1 times 1 equals 1 plus 2 times 6 equals 12 12 plus 1 equals 13 that equals 4 and that equals and this is the result okay here we have uh, uh, actually we can also do uh, uh, we can also calculate b times uh, a and uh, we can show that b a times uh, b uh, times a is different to a b if you want to calculate BA, BA is uh, 2 because B equals that. So 2, 1, 1, 6 times A. A equals that. 1, 2, 2, and 0. This row by this column, 2 times 1 equals 2 plus 1 
times 2 which means 4 2 times 2 equals 4 plus 1 times 0 which means 0 so we have 4 as you can see because that element is different to that element we can tell without uh, that calculation and that calculation we can tell AB is different to BA as you can see so here because we have one examples about uh, not commutative so the multiplic in general the multiplication of two matrices is not commutative it's not like 2 times 3 equals 3 times 2 We're still with the matrix multiplication and now imagine if you want to multiply a matrix by a scalar. It's uh, very easy. Imagine that we have a certain scalar called lambda belong to a set uh, C uh, complex number. Uh, for example, uh, that uh, lambda may be a real number or a, a pure real number also. Uh, for example, uh, lambda may be equals uh, 2, lambda may be equals pi, uh, lambda may be equals uh, square root of 3, lambda may be equals uh, 1 plus i, lambda may be equals 2i, uh, lambda may be equals uh, 1 over 2, etc. Uh, so, uh, if you have, for example, a certain matrix A, and uh, if we multiply uh, that uh, this matrix by uh, the scalar lambda, the result uh, is uh, always uh, possible. It's, it is always possible to multiply a matrix A uh, by a scalar lambda, and the result is lambda A, quite simply. But uh, how we multiply that, how we do multiplication, Actually, we multiply each element of our matrix A by the by this scalar lambda. For example, example. If you have, for example, A equals two, I uh, zero, and uh, let's say I plus one, uh, and uh, take uh, lambda equals, for example, uh, two, if you want. Then uh, lambda a, which equals 2a, is 2 times 2i, 0i plus 1, 2. So that equals 2 times that 2, 2 times 0. 2 times i and 2 times i plus 1, 2i, 0, and that times uh, 2 times i plus 1. Then the result is uh, 4, so 2a here equals 4, 2i, 0 and finally 2i plus 2 so as you can see it's uh, very simple now it's time for the notion of uh, square matrix a square matrix is a matrix whose number of columns equals its number of rows. Examples a 2, 2 square. So, as you can see here, this is a square matrix because the number of rows equals the number of columns. This is a square matrix. For example, 2, 1, 
1 minus 2 another example a 3 3 square matrix 1 i 6 2 5 3 4 1 and 0 and we have also we can have also for for matrix etc uh, in general we denote that matrix by n n n n matrix or mm if you want another example for for square matrix actually uh, here it's like a square it's it form a square square matrix uh, so we have here for example 2 1 0 2 0 1 minus 1 5 3 1 plus i 1 1 0 3 0 1 after that we have the notion of identity matrix uh, five uh, identity matrix first definition an identity matrix is a special type of square matrix that has once along the diagonal from the upper left corner to the lower right corner and zeros everywhere else it is typically denoted by the symbol i and has the property that when it is multiplied by any other matrix of the same dimensions of course the result is that matrix itself for example so for example uh, if you want an example about uh, an identity matrix uh, we have an example of a tree tree identity matrix for example the tree tree identity matrix is uh, we denote that identity matrix by i which equals uh, we have one one in diagonal and zero zero for the others element and now uh, the the thing uh, the things become interesting when this matrix is uh, multiplied by any other 3 3 matrix say uh, a uh, for example uh, a uh, i a uh, actually a is a 3 3 matrix so uh, a is a 3 3 matrix like that so i a equals a uh, so the result is just the matrix it's the matrix a itself since the ones on the diagonal are multiplicative identities that leave the elements of a unchanged identity matrices are important in linear algebra because they are analogous to the number one it's like the number one in multiplication and play a role in defining inverses, determinants, and other important concepts. We can show that if you want. Now, uh, I want to use a mathematical symbol to show in that, please. It's not very difficult, but we can show that. It's, it's quite easy. So, consider... Consider... 
3-3 matrix A such that A equals so here I want to use some uh, notation the first element is A11 the second so A11 because that element belong to the first row and the first column that element belong to the first row but the second column that element belong to the first row and third column etc so we have A11 A12 A21 A22 A23 A 3, 1, A, 3, 2, and A, 3, 3. And an identity matrix, I equals 1, 1, 1, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, like that. So here the goal is to show in that AI equals A. Let's do this. So here I A equals one 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 zero 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 A one one A one two A one three etc. So that equals uh, the rule is uh, row by column. So if, if I want that first element, it is 1 times A11 plus 0 times A21, which equals 0, plus 0 times A31, which equals 0. So the result is A11. For that element, that times that, that times that, 0, 0, so we find A12. This is the same thing for that. This is A13, that with that, 0 times 0 equals 0, but 1 times A21 equals A21, plus 0 times A31 equals 0, so the result is A21. The same thing for the others, A22, A23, A31, A2, A32, A33, it is good. A, a i a and that is quite simply a so we we just show in that after that we have get and bra notation now it's time for get and bra notation a get notation The usual vector uh, belongs to uh, a space uh, called Euclidean space. For example, if you have a certain vector u, that vector, for example, that vector belong to what we called Euclidean space. And we can use a matrix notation and view a vector as a matrix with one coulomb. For example, that vector may be equals uh, something, uh, for example, 3i hat plus 4j hat, for example, plus 5k hat, and the matrix notation for that is 3, 4, 5. As you can see, this is a, uh, that, that vector belongs to three-dimensional space. Uh, for Euclidean space, we use that notation. The usual, uh, we use the usual notation of a vector within a row, which means that row, or v for example, 
w for example a certain vector a b for example etc but imagine that we have a vector uh, belongs to uh, another space and uh, imagine that that element the element of that vector the elements of that vector are complex numbers uh, how we can represent that it's uh, very difficult to represent that in Euclidean space in that case we use cat notation actually uh, that cat notation also known as Dirac notation named after Paul Dirac and actually cats belong to a space called Hilbert space so this is our text uh, of course uh, we have uh, the first example Uh, the example is uh, that I imagine that if I want to denote uh, a cat uh, the Dirac notation actually the Dirac notation is instead of using that notation that notation we take this part and that part here and the notation of a cat is like that and here we have cat u also cat v for example actually we can use matrix notation for that and exactly Coulomb vector and u here equals for example 1 0 and v equals 0 1 we can have also another uh, another uh, example w for example equals uh, we can have four elements four for example we can have five one plus i i for example as you can see we cannot have in Euclidean space something like that we cannot have w equals for example a certain complex number here I had plus something in Euclidean space it's impossible to have a complex number here in Euclidean space actually I can belong to a space called Hilbert space so the usual vector belong to a space called Euclidean space we can use matrix notation and view a vector as a matrix with one coulomb for Euclidean space, we use the usual notation of a vector with an arrow. But what if a vector belongs to another space and the elements of that vector are complex numbers? In that case, we use cat notation, also known as Dirac notation, named after Paul Dirac. Cats belong to a space called Hilbert space. After that, we have bra notation. Now we have bra notation after seeing cat notation. Actually, we know that a cat belongs to Hilbert space. The bra belongs to the old space of Hilbert space denoted by H star. And the bra belongs to the dual, the dual space of Hilbert space uh, denoted by H star denoted by H star like that 
So, uh, the bra is the dual of a cat. The bra, the bra is the dual of the cat. Then, if, for example, a certain cat U equals A B C, then U dagger or U plus, if you want, equals the bra. And the notation of the bra is like that. It's like the opposite. And actually the bra, if the cat is a column vector, the bra is a row vector. And that equals actually we have a matrix with one row and exactly we have the complex conjugate of A which means A star, B star and C star. And also of course, so here as you can see the bra is cat dagger and also the cat is bra dagger which means that you bra u equals u plus or u dagger and also the cat is bra dagger which means that u a cat u equals the bra u dagger the bra is also called the hermitian conjugate of the cat or the adjoint of the cat. Of course, we have some examples. It's very important to see examples. Imagine that we have a certain cat u equals uh, 1, 0, 3. If you want the bra, it's uh, u dagger, which equals the bra u which equals 1 star 0 star 3 star which means complex conjugate but 1 is a pure number also for 0 and 3 so we have 1 0 and 3 we have another example if we have complex numbers actually this is why we already seen complex numbers and why complex number is very important as you can see here so imagine that you have a certain v equals the cat v equals uh, 1 plus i 2 and 2 plus 2 i then v dagger which equals the bra v is the complex conjugate of 1 plus i, the complex conjugate of 2, and the complex conjugate of 2 plus 2i. The complex conjugate of 1 plus i is 1 minus i, complex conjugate of 2 is 2, the complex conjugate of 2 plus 2i is 2 minus 2i. And this is it. This is it. It's very simple as you can see. So this is the concept about uh, cat and bra. Actually, it's, uh, I, I simplify that concept for you. So we have uh, actually the, the tools to understand the notion of qubit in quantum computing and this is my goal about that uh, because uh, we know uh, what is uh, the cat and the bra now we can see the notion of inner product so see inner Product. 
inner product is the equivalent of scalar product in Euclidean space. In Euclidean space, if you have, for example, a certain vector u and a certain vector v, then the scalar product, the scalar product is denoted by u dot v and uh, if for example u equals something like 1 2 3 and v for example equals something like minus 1 minus 2 3 for example then the rule is multiplying that element by that element that element by that element of course summing that element by that element which means 1 times minus 1 plus 2 times minus 2 plus 3 times 3 and this is actually it's like the inner product it's like that we have actually the same rule because actually we can represent it by a coulomb vector actually uh, but the difference between that is uh, we have the notion of bracket we have the notion of bracket it's like that but the only difference is that the bra is uh, the dual of a cat we have some examples of course so here this is for scalar product but what about for inner product and what is exactly the inner product? The inner product is the product between the bra and the ket, which is called the bracket. Here, the bra, the notation of the bra is that, and the notation of ket is that. Of, of course, we have a certain bar. So, the bra, that. So, if you have the bracket we have the bra here and the cat here but the notation actually that symbol becomes like that one so this is the notation of a bracket and actually the bracket is is a complex number is a scalar actually is a complex number also we can have also a pure number of course so note that the bracket is a complex Uh, number. Uh, we have uh, an example. Uh, I want to use the preceding example about the, the notation of uh, uh, bra. So imagine that you have u equals 1, 0, 3 and I have V equals 1 plus I 2 2 plus 2 I here the goal if you want to calculate if you want to calculate for example V U we need to calculate the bra of cat v it's very important first the bra v equals here we have a column vector now we have a row vector 
and don't forget we have here the complex conjugate of each element so we have 1 plus i star which means 1 minus i 2 star which equals 2 and 2 plus 2i star which equals 2 minus 2i now we have our bra and then if we want to calculate vu vu is 1 0 3 with 1 minus i 2 2 minus 2i it's like a product between two matrices. So this is 1 times 1 minus i plus 0 times 2 plus 3 times 2 minus 2i. So this is 1 times 1 minus i plus 0 times 2 plus 3 times 2 minus to i and that equals if i want to develop that this is 1 minus i plus 0 plus 6 minus 6 i which equals 1 plus 6 equals 7 minus i minus 6 i equals minus 7i and as you can see that the bracket here is a complex number in general as you can see so this is a fundamental example about that here this is the last part about math prerequisites about quantum computing it's very important to see that after that we uh, we use all that math prerequisites, for example, for uh, uh, quantum gate, for example, quantum gate, we can represent the quantum gate by a matrix, a matrix, and this is why uh, we we seen here uh, matrices, and also the element of matrices can be a complex number, and because of that we already seen complex numbers. And also the notion of probability also. We have the notion of probability about that. And the notion of probability use also complex numbers actually. So we have all the tools to understanding uh, the math behind quantum computing. So let's begin quantum computing now if you want. Hi everyone, welcome to this first introduction about quantum computing. Uh, if you want to compare quantum computing uh, with uh, classical, uh, in classical computing, it's important uh, to uh, focus uh, on the notion of the bit. For classical computing, we have what we call bits short for binary digits and for quantum computing we have the notion of qubit short for quantum binary digit let's begin with the bit my goal here is simplification so i use a simple light bulb to explain we have this uh, electric circuit it's a very simple electric circuit we have a battery for energy we have our light bulb we have our switch here our switch is very important so here because we can tell that because switch is open we can tell that the switch is in off position because the switch is in off position there is no light because the circuit is interrupted the current doesn't flow and because the current doesn't flow we can represent this situation by the binary digit zero this is the first situation 
now if the switch now is closed which means if the switch is in the on position we have light because of the current flow for this situation here we can represent this situation with the binary digit one so if you want to summarize in classical computing a bit can have only one of two possible values which are zero or one please focus on that or because we cannot have in classical computing zero and one at the same time for example cpu microprocessor contains billions of transistors in digital electronics each transistor here represents a bit and each bit can be either zero or one to summarize in classical computing a bit can have only one value at a time which is either zero or one the word or is used to indicate that the bit can take only one of these two possible values and not both simultaneously hello quantum world in the world of quantum physics you can have the switch at the on position and off position at the same time remember it's just a way to simplify this because in quantum world world we don't have electronic switches because quantum world is a very very tiny world it's uh, like the schrodinger's the schrodinger's cat there's that cat is dead and alive at the same time quantum computing in quantum computing classical bits are not used we use what is called a qubit and we use for that Dirac notation due to the Paul Dirac one of the greatest physicists for that the basic unit of information in a quantum computing is uh, therefore the cat zero and the cat one which we denote by we don't use actually just zero like that but we add the symbol the notation of the cat so this is the cat zero and for one this is the cat one a qubit can exist in state 0 and state 1 at the same time. So here focus on this and because here it's very important for a qubit. And this is the power of quantum computing actually and why quantum computing exists. This principle this is the, the most important principle is called the superposition principle. As you can see here, I use two colors, red and blue, and for superposition for qubit, this is two colors. I mixed those two colors. We denote this qubit by psi and the expression of ket psi is a certain coefficient alpha times the ket zero plus a certain coefficient beta times the ket one so as you can see here the ket psi is a superposition of states zero and one but what do the coefficients alpha and beta represent 
actually alpha and beta are complex numbers and their square magnitude uh, represents of represents a probability so the square magnitude of alpha and beta represents a probability and specifically the square magnitude of alpha represents the probability of finding the state zero which means get zero and the square magnitude of beta is the probability of finding the state one which means get one but there is one condition and a very important condition about alpha and beta the condition for alpha and beta is alpha squared plus beta squared should be 1 equals 1. Actually, this is a trivial condition because mathematically the sum of all probability should be 1. This condition is also called the normalization condition. To elaborate further, let's do some calculation. So, if you want to calculate the square magnitude of ket psi, and you know that the notation of uh, uh, magnitude is uh, that, and I know exactly the square of the square magnitude of ket psi if you want to calculate that we can use another notation called bra and bra is quite simply bra is the deal so a bracket bra bra of a ket bra of a ket bra of ket psi is the dual of ket of ket psi which means that if you have ket psi and if you want to calculate the bra all that thing, the thing that you have do, to do is use that notation. The Hermitian conjugate of, of ket psi is quite simply the bra. So, if, if I, I use this notation, so using that notation, the psi squared actually the square magnitude is equals bra ket psi which equals so before to calculate that it's very important to explicit the the uh, the notation or the expression of the ket psi. We have psi equals alpha times zero plus beta times one. And if I want the dual of ket psi so psi plus of or psi dagger equals the bra psi which equals here this is the complex conjugate so if i want to calculate that i should calculate the complex conjugate of alpha which equals alpha star or alpha bar this is the complex conjugate, the complex conjugate of alpha.
of alpha. So times the bra zero plus the same thing, the complex conjugate of beta times the bra one. Okay, so you know something very important. Knowing, knowing that the cat, uh, the cat zero and the cat one form a basis and that basis the notation of that basis is that then we have the inner products zero zero which means bracket zero zero equals one and the bracket one one equals one it's like scalar product for Euclidean space. 0, 1 equals 0 and 1, 0 equals 0. So I can use that to calculate the bracket Psi Psi. So the bracket, that bracket equals C, the bra psi is exactly alpha star times 0 plus beta star times 1. And all that times ket psi which equals alpha 0 plus beta 1. If I develop that, I obtain alpha star times alpha. And alpha star times beta, remember that if I develop this, this calculation, I obtain here alpha star 0, 0, and 0, 0 equals 1. But alpha star beta times 0, 1, that part equals 0 because 0, 1 equals 0. So uh, we don't need to calculate alpha. Uh, star 0 with uh, beta 1 because equals 0 and we don't to calculate beta star times alpha with 1 0 because 1 0 equals 0 so here uh, you just to calculate beta star 1 times beta 1 which equals beta star beta because 1 1 equals 1 so this is plus beta star times beta and you know that complex conjugate of alpha times alpha is quite simply the square magnitude of alpha and the complex conjugate of beta times beta is quite simply the square magnitude of beta. If you want to understand more, we have some examples after this part. So here I have for you some example if you want to understand more the notion of ket and uh, the notion of the dual of ket which means bra. So here as you can see we have the first example. For, for this first example we want to calculate the probability for, for uh, the probability of finding the ket uh, zero or uh, the state zero if you want so uh, here you have just to apply the rule if i want the probability so for the first example for that first example psi 1 equals 1 over square root of 2 1 over square root of 2 the ket 0 plus 1 over square root square root of 2 the ket 1 so if i want to calculate the probability for the state 1 for the ket 1 the probability of finding the ket 0 is quite simply the square magnitude of that coefficient 
and you know that in general if I want to calculate the square magnitude uh, it's very important to know the general case because if you have a, a complex number you you must to do the complex conjugate for a complex number and you know that if you have a complex con if you have a complex number uh, the complex conjugate for a complex number is different for example if you have uh, i uh, the complex conjugate i star or i bar equals minus i but if you have a certain real number for example if you have 2 the square, uh, the the conjugate of uh, the complex conjugate of two two star is two. It's the same, okay? So here, this is one over square root of two star times one over square root of two. And actually, this is we know that. This is a pure real number. So the complex conjugate of that number equals 1 over square root of 2 times 1 over square root of 2, which means that equals 1 over 2. So the probability for, the, for this first case, the probability of finding the k0, which means the state, one, the state 0, is 1 over 2. What about the state 1? This is the same thing for the probability of finding the ket1 equals 1 over square root of 2 star times 1 over square root of 2 which equals 1 over square root of 2 times 1 over square root of 2 which equals 1 over 2. And what about if I want the bra of the Cat of the qubit uh, phi uh, psi one. So you know that the dual of psi one, psi one dagger, psi one plus, if you want, is uh, the bra psi one, which equals. So here. It's very important to use the general rule. So, it's 1 over square root of 2 star. And I know that 1 over square root of 2 is star is 1 over square root of 2. The complex conjugate of a real number is, is that real number times the bra of 0, which equals that plus 1 over square root of 2 star times the bra 1. So, now I can calculate the bracket Psi 1, Psi 1. So, the bracket Psi 1, Psi 1 equals, uh, before that, uh, this is quite simply 1 over square root of 2, because actually 1 over square root of 2 star is 1 over square root of 2 the bra 0 plus 1 over square root of 2 the bra 1 then if I want the bracket psi 1 psi 1 equals this bracket which means 1 over square root of 2 this bra, sorry, this bra, 0 plus 1 over square root of 2, 1. So this is for psi 1 times the ket psi 1, which means 1 over square root of 2, uh, 0 plus 1 over square root of 2 1 so if I develop now the, this calculation I obtain so I have for Psi 1 Psi 1 equals 
If I develop, I have 1 over square root of 2, 0 times 1 over square root of 2, 0. So I obtain 1 over square root of 2 times 1 over square root of 2, 0 with 0. Here, because uh, I have a real number, the order is not important. But for the bra and for the cat, the order is very important. So, first, I must have the bra, and after the bra, I must have the cat, because it is a bra cat. Here I have 1 over square root of 2, so this is plus 1 over square root of 2 times 1 over square root of 2. 0 with 1, actually, I want to, uh, to, to develop this, this calculation in details because it's very important for you. So, 0 with 1 plus 1 over square root of 2 1 uh, the bra times 1 over square root of 2 the bra 1 and get 0 plus 1 over square root of 2 times 1 over square root of 2 times the bra 1 get 1 and remember that that 0 0 equals 1 1 which which equals 1 because actually zero one the cat zero one form a basis and and that inner product zero between zero one equals zero. Therefore therefore The cat, the bracket psi one, psi one equals one over square root of two times one over square root of two is one over two. Zero zero is one, so this is one times one, which equals one over two. This is zero, so this term equals zero. This term equals zero because that term equals zero and that equals one over two so i find finally one and as you can see my qubit here is a normalized qubit which means that the the magnitude of my qubit here equals one so here i have the normalization condition then as you can see then because then psi 1 the square magnitude of psi 1 equals 1 which means that the magnitude of psi 1 equals 1 Okay. So for that examples, uh, you must use the same uh, rule. So a second example for uh, uh, calculation of probability 
so here we have psi 2 equals 1 over square root of 3 get 0 plus squ square root of 2 over square root of 3 1 so what is the probability of finding the ket 0 so for that probability uh, of finding the ket 0 or state uh, 0 is p0 uh, equals so this is the square magnitude of 1 over square root of 3 1 over square root of 3 star times 1 over square root of 3 and because 1 over square root of 3 is a pure real number then the, the complex conjugate of that number equals the same number so it is 1 over square root of 3 times 1 over square root of 3 which means that probability equals 1 over 3 and what about now for the second probability because here uh, I, I tell you that psi 2 here is a normalized state is a normalized is a normalized state therefore because that we can do another another way to calculate that probability the prob the probability for finding the ket 1 is quite simply 1 minus the probability of finding the ket 0 which means 1 minus 1 over 3 which equals 2 over 3 this is the first way to do this we can also do this way or the probability of finding the ket 1 equals square root of 2 over square root of 3 star times square root of 2 over square root of 3 which equals 2 over 3 here we can verify the normalization condition as you can see if uh, if we forgot this this way to calculate actually the probability p0 plus p1 equals 1 over 3 plus 2 over 3 which equals which equal <laughs> 3 over 3 which equals 1 okay okay so here for those two examples for psi 1 and for psi 2 you remark that the coefficients for those examples are pure real numbers after we have another example for complex numbers so this is a very important examples what about if psi 3 equals 1 plus i over 2 times 0 plus 1 minus i over 2 times 1 what about that case if i want to calculate here the pay the, the, the p0 the probability of finding the k0 what and the probability of finding the ket 1 uh, we uh, we are going to see that for the next in the next part so now it's time for a matrix uh, representation or vector notation uh, actually we can represent any vector in this world by using another notation called matrix representation or vector notation but we use exclusively for a vector a matrix with one coulomb called coulomb matrix so a coulomb matrix is a matrix with one coulomb for example this matrix a equals 1 3 2 has one and only one coulomb and this exactly our coulomb actually the ket 0 itself 
uh, is represented by a Coulomb vector and that Coulomb vector equals 1, 0 and the ket1 is represented by another Coulomb vector equals 0, 1. Remember, remember that the ket psi itself equals alpha ket0 plus beta ket1. And uh, we know that the ket0 equals 1, 0 and the ket1 equals 0, 1. Therefore, we have alpha times 1, 0 equals alpha 0 because alpha times 1 equals alpha and alpha times 0 equals 0 plus beta times 0 1 and beta times 0 equals 0 and beta times 1 equals beta. So we, we just do this calculation and we find this result which means alpha beta because alpha plus 0 equals alpha and 0 plus beta equals beta. So please, you should remember this result. It's very important. Now imagine if we want the vector notation of bra psi. It's very simple and intuitive. It's quite simply a row vector. A row vector is a matrix with one row. So if we want the bra psi, uh, we know that the bra is the dual of the ket. So the coefficient of the bra are the complex conjugate of the ket. So the bra psi equals that row matrix, but we have the complex conjugate of alpha, which means alpha star, and the complex conjugate, which means beta star. By using this notation of bra and psi, we can recalculate the bracket. So the bracket psi psi equals alpha star beta star times alpha beta. So as you can see, it's a, uh, it's a product of both two matrix, of both two, two matrices, a matrix with one row times a matrix with one coulomb. So here because we have a matrix product of two matrices, so we should multiply this coulomb by uh, this row, this row by this coulomb. Because the product, if you want to, to multiply two matrices, this is row by Coulomb. So we have alpha star times alpha plus beta star times beta. But we know that alpha star times alpha is the magnitude is the square is the squared magnitude of alpha and beta star times beta is the square magnitude of beta. Uh, so after that, we have some example to understand more. So now we have uh, some uh, examples of uh, matrix uh, uh, representation. Uh, we have uh, the first qubit, uh, second, third, and the fourth qubit, and we want to find the bra of each gate and calculate the bracket. So find the bra of each gate and calculate the bracket. Uh, other thing that we have to do is quite simply to use the rule. So recall that if I want to use the matrix notation, the bracket psi psi equals the alpha star, the complex conjugate of 
alpha which means alpha star and beta star times alpha beta which equals alpha star alpha plus beta star beta which equals the squared magnitude of alpha plus the squared magnitude of beta for this first qubit so for one we have psi equals one over square root of two one over square root of two then the bra psi equals one over square root of two star and because this is a pure real number then the complex conjugate of one over square root of two equals one over square root of two and this is the same thing for one for this other coefficient one over square root of two star equals one over square root of two that implies the bracket psi psi equals here the bra is that and the psi is that so it's one over square root of two one over square root of two times one over square root of two one over square root of two and remember that the rule is row by column so we have to multiply that coefficient by the that coefficient which means one over square root of two times one over square root of two plus that coefficient times that coefficient which means one over square root of two times one over square root square root of two which equals because one over square root of two times one over square root of two equals one over two and this is the same thing for that plus one over two which equals one okay so as you can see this is uh, a normalized uh, qubit if we want to represent uh, our qubit we use what we called block sphere due to felix block here we have for our block sphere we have this axis that axis and this axis this is z axis y axis and x axis here the the north pole of the sphere exactly here represent the ket zero and the south pole represent the ket one and any point belong to the surface of the sphere represent a qubit psi for example which equals a certain coefficient alpha zero plus a certain coefficient beta one and actually that qubit here represents the plus qubit that qubit is belong to this to the surface of the sphere and to the axis x and in the opposite belong to the surface and at the same time to the axis is the ket minus remember that the ket plus is equals square root 
of 2 over 2 kit 0 plus kit 1 and the kit minus equals square root of 2 over 2 kit 0 minus kit 1 and this is it uh, if you want to summarize the notion of block sphere so now it's time for one of the most important thing in quantum computing which is quantum gates we begin with uh, single qubit gates and for one we begin with x gate so actually x gate uh, is uh, is perfectly equivalent to not gate in in classical computing both of 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 uh, x gate and the not gate in classical and quantum computing are reversible and uh, you know that one of the very important condition about gates is that uh, all gates must be reversible so first uh, what is the the gate notation so a gate notation Uh, actually, we have uh, for x gate we have two notation. We have that notation. This is the first notation. We have just an x here. We have that notation, or we have also that. notation for our for our, for our x gate so uh, because uh, here uh, we want to simplify things uh, it's very simple to use matrix uh, representation so we have matrix representation for any gates so what is the matrix representation for x gate it's very simple so matrix matrix representation for our x gate is quite simply so x actually this is a, a square matrix with the two a column and two row so this is a two two matri matrix this matrix is zero one one zero so after that we can know the action of the gate of that gate to get zero and get one so what is the action so action So what is the action action of the gate X to get zero and get one? Actually, this says why we uh, we already seen matrix representation. Uh, matrix representation for our cat 0 and cat 1 so before that we know that we know that the matrix representation of our cat 0 is so our cat 0 equals 1 0 and our kit 1 equals 0 1 so if I want to know the action of the gate X to the cat 0 it's very simple then X 0 equals all the thing that we have to do here is 
use matrix representation for x because x equals 0 1 1 0 so we we replace x by 0 1 1 0 and because that the ket 0 equals 1 0 we have here 1 0 so this is just a product of two matrices that product equals so you know that if I want to do that product this is this row by this column which means that this is a product product of that row with this with this column which means that I have here 0 times 0 times 1 plus 1 times 0 which means that for the first element we have 0 times 1 equals 0 1 times 0 equals 0 so 0 plus 0 equals 0 so I have for that first element 0 what about for the second element for that element we have 1 0 times 1 0 which means 1 times 1 plus 0 times 0 that equals 1 plus 0 which equals 1 so for the second element we have 1 actually the dimension of my matrix for my matrix here is predictable because I have here a 2-2 two, two matrix, matrix, two, two matrix because I have 2 row and 2 column the first row, the second row, the first column, the second column so this is a 2-2 two, two matrix for 0 I have 2-1 a 2-1 matrix because I have two row the first row the second row and one column actually this is a a column vector so the result should be the result should be 2-1 2-1 because that 2 goes with that 2 so I obtain 2 1 and you know that this is a vector this is a matrix a column vector with uh, one column and uh, two row but this is a column vector so as you, as you can see this is x 0 and 0 1 is quite simply the ket 0 remember that ket0 equals 1 0 and ket1 equals 0 1 so this is the so this 0 1 equals the ket1 sorry this is the ket1 so it's like a switch as you can see here you can predict that it's pre predictable because it's it's not get after all now what about so here we have x0 equals 1 this is our first result now what about the x1 x I use the matrix notation the matrix notation for x is quite simply 0 1 1 0 the matrix notation for 1 is 0 1 this is a product of two matrices so I have this uh, the first row that row with that column which means uh, for that I have 0 times 0 plus 1 times 1 which equals 1 so the first element element is 1 what about the second element that row with that column so here I have 1 
times 0 plus 0 times 1 which equals 0 so the, the second element is 0 and you know that 1 0 equals quite simply the cat 0 x so x1 equals 0 so this is the result our second result as you can see so the conclusion is that x is like a switch it switches the cat 0 to cat 1 and the cat 1 to cat 0 so if you want to summarize that you need to remember that so if you have the gate x the cat 0 after the gate the gate x becomes cat 1 and the cat 1 after the gate x becomes the cat 0 you must to remember that it's very important it's very intuitive it's like a switch 0 becomes 1 and 1 becomes 0 after seeing the notion of uh, x uh, gate now it's time for some examples we have uh, our first example imagine that we have uh, a qubit a single qubit any single qubit the form of any single qubit which means alpha 0 plus beta 1 if we apply here the get x to the gate x to that qubit psi what we find so here the goal is that what is the result of x psi it's quite simple recall that remember that so you should remember that x 0 equals 1 and x 1 equals 0 so by using this x psi equals because alpha is just a coefficient is a scalar so we can write alpha x 0 plus beta x 1 remember that i can do this because alpha because alpha belong to c it is a scalar and beta belong to c because alpha is just a coefficient therefore x alpha equals alpha x actually alpha is a scalar and x is a matrix so we can do this for that case but if alpha is a matrix we cannot do this in general if you have for example a certain a times b if a and b are mat matrices in general is different to that because both of that are mat matrices and here alpha is just a coefficient is a scalar so we can do this so here i have just to use x0 equals 1 and x1 equals 0 so that equals alpha 1 plus beta 0 I add for you that important remark here then as you can see we finally obtain for x psi that if you want now to use matrix notation x psi equals alpha uh, no equals beta alpha 
why if we want to elaborate further if we want to verify this remember that x psi is alpha 1 plus beta 0 and because of that 1 is 0 1 and the cat 0 is 1 0 therefore that equals so alpha times 0 equals 0 and alpha times 1 equals alpha so that equals 0 alpha plus so here beta times 1 equals beta and beta times 0 equals 0 so that equals beta alpha so as you can see here you can remark that before the psi equals alpha 0 plus beta 1 and after applying after x gate which means that if we use the matrix notation that equals alpha beta and after after x gate after x gate we have x psi so after x gate we have beta alpha so it's like a switch it's like a switch it's like a switch we had beta alpha beta like that and after x gate we obtain beta alpha so here this is uh, our second example about the x gate actually the it's a uh, very simple uh, so here if uh, we apply uh, our x uh, gate to that uh, qubit we have x uh, psi equals 1 over square root of 2 x uh, 0 plus uh, 1 over square root of 2 x 1 here uh, we can uh, interchange between 1 uh, over square root of 2 and x because uh, 1 over square root of 2 square root of 2 is a, a scalar and uh, x uh, is a, a, ma a matrix so we can uh, interchange between both of them because 1 over square root of 2 is just a scalar so uh, remember that x0 equals 1 and x1 equals 0 then that equals 1 over square root of 2 1 plus 1 over square root of 2 0 so as you can see because uh, we have the same coefficient uh, I have the same uh, uh, qubit uh, here it's like <laughs> I have the same qubit but uh, if I want uh, also to use a matrix notation for qubit psi here equals 1 over square root of 2 1 over square root of 2 and uh, the x uh, psi equals 1 over square root of 2 here and the other here so I have actually the same uh, qubit for that case because I have the same coefficient here here it's more interesting because uh, I have I don't have the same coefficient here and here I have this number uh, 1 over square root of 2 and here minus 1 over square root of 2 if I want to use matrix notation it's quite simply 1 over square root of 2 minus 1 over square root of 2 
Then here x psi equals 1 over square root of 2 x 0 minus 1 over square root of 2 x 1 which equals 1 over square root of 2 1 minus 1 over square root of 2 0 so as you can see here x if I want to use here the matrix notation the matrix representation is quite simply minus 1 over square root of 2 1 over square root of 2 after that we are going to see one of the most important gate it's uh, which is uh, Hadamard gate so now it's time uh, for one of the most important uh, gates in quantum computing actually uh, this is uh, what we called the Hadamard gate so the Hadamard gate or H gate is uh, considered is often considered to be the most important gate in quantum computing let's see why so first uh, we uh, begin with uh, the gate notation what about the gate notation for gate notation it's very simple uh, because it's uh, the Hadamard gate so this is the for Hadamard gate and the gate notation is like that so we have just uh, the letter H and of course our square and it is the gate notation after that uh, we have uh, matrix representation so B matrix representation the matrix representation is H is H equals 1 over square root of 2 1 1 1 minus 1 now what is the action of the gate H to get 0 and get 1 so C uh, action of the gate H to get 0 and get 1 all the thing that we have to do is uh, quite simply to use uh, matrix notation for 0 and for 1 so if you want to to uh, to know the action of H to get 0 for example uh, we have H the matrix notation for H is 1 over square root of 2 1 1 1 minus 1 and the matrix representation for 0 is quite simply for qubit 0 for k 0 is 1 0 so that equals this is just uh, a number it's a scalar so we have 1 over square root of 2 and we have this product between those two matrices so we have that row with that column actually here we have for that product we have a matrix a 2 2 matrix with a 2 1 2 1 matrix 
So the result is a 2-1 matrix, which means a Coulomb vector. Uh, yes, uh, yes, uh, a matrix with one coulomb, a matrix with one coulomb because two one, and so we have the result is a matrix with two rows and one coulomb. So it's like that. We have here a certain coefficient and here a certain coefficient. So the result is that. So one one times one zero, one times one plus one times zero equals one. So we have for that first element we have one. And what about for that? We have one minus one times one zero. So one times one minus one times zero which equals one. Okay, so we have that result. But this is a very interesting thing here. We can write the, that result 1, 1 by using a sum of uh, qubit 0 and 1. Why? It's very simple. Look at here. So here if I want to write that uh, that result uh, by uh, using uh, the ket uh, 0 and uh, the ket 1 it's uh, very simple all the thing that I have to do is to create a certain sum by using this uh, matrix as, uh, as you can see I can uh, write uh, that uh, result uh, uh, in a form of uh, sum of a first matrix and a second uh, matrix uh, as uh, you can see. So this is uh, 1 over square root of 2 times, so here it's uh, quite simply 1, 0 plus uh, 0, 1. Uh, you can verify this. 1, 0 plus 0, 1 equals 1 plus 0, 0 plus 1 which equals 1, 1. And uh, as, uh, as you can see, uh, 1, 0 is the ket 0, and 0, 1 is the ket 1. So that equals 1 over square root of 2, the ket 0 plus the ket 1, then h zero. If I if I develop this calculation, we find one over square root of two zero plus one over square root of two one. Okay. Uh, now, uh, what about? Uh, the other, the action of the ket uh, h uh, of uh, the the gate h to ket one, the action of the gate h to ket one equals. So the gate h is one over square root of two. One 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 minus one times. The ket one is zero one, so that equals one over square root of two. I have here two elements because this is a two two matrix. This is a two one matrix. Two goes with that two, and the result is two one. Then here I have 1 times 0 plus 1 times 1 which equals 1 and 1 times 0 minus 1 times 1 which equals minus 1. Therefore 
that equals one actually I can rewrite that result by using a sum of two matrices so that equals one over square root of two one zero plus zero minus one you can verify that one plus zero equals one zero minus one equals minus one that equals one over square root of two one zero minus zero one because here it's a scalar minus one times one so I can put this minus away outside of my matrix so here as you can see one zero is quite simply the ket zero and zero one is the ket one so one over square root of two times the ket zero minus one over square root of two the ket one so this is h one so as you can see this is the action of the gate h to one and this is the action of the gate h to zero so as you can see here we have a very interesting a very interesting uh, remark here that remark is the gate so the conclusion actually this is a conclusion the gate h creates superposition state because we begin with zero with the ket zero just one ket and we create ket zero and ket one and this is the same thing for one we begin with the ket one and we create zero and one okay so we can tell that the Hadamard gate creates superposition states and this is the conclusion so if I want to write this I have my H gate so after so I have the zero and after the, the, the Hadamard gate I find 1 over square root of 2 get 0 plus get 1 which means 1 over square root of 2 0 plus 1 over square root of 2 1 but for 1 after the gate H for 1 we have the ket 1 over uh, the qubit 1 over square root of 2 this is a superposition state 1 over square root of 2 0 minus 1 and this is why the Hadamard gate is one of the most important gates in quantum computing so after seeing the Hadamard gate we have other gates uh, we have for example the Y gate Y gate of course we have the gate notation so what is the gate notation of Y gate gate notation gate notation for y gate is that y and matrix representation the matrix representation is very important because with the matrix representation we can see the action of the gate to get 0 and get 1 so what is the matrix representation representation the matrix representation of y gate is uh, y equals uh, 0 minus i i 0 
i is uh, the imaginary number actually so uh, because we have uh, the matrix uh, representation of y gate uh, we can uh, uh, we can see the action of that gate to ket 0 and ket 1 so action action of the gate first uh, for uh, the action of the gate y to get 0 equals the matrix because the matrix representation is 0 minus i i 0 we have 0 minus i i 0 times the ket 0 the ket 0 is quite simply 1 0 therefore that equals here the result is a uh, is a column matrix because I have two two matrix with two one matrix so the result is two one zero times one equals zero minus i times zero equals zero so zero plus zero equals zero i times uh, one equals i plus zero times zero which means the result is i so here I can write uh, the result uh, by using my uh, qubit uh, 1 because actually that result is quite simply i the imaginary number times 0 1 and 0 1 is quite simply the ket 1 so this is the action of the ket y to ket 0 now what about the action of the ket y to ket uh, 1? So y 1 equals 0 minus i i 0 times 0 1 which equals 0 times 0 equals 0 minus i times 1 equals minus i 0 plus 0 plus minus i times 1 which means minus i i 0 equals 0 plus 0 times 1 0 so the result is 0 therefore that equals minus i times 1 0 and 1 0 itself is the ket is the ket 0 which means that equals minus i the ket 0 so this is the action of the ket 1 to ket uh, no this is the action of the of the gate y to ket 1 so the result is minus i uh, 0 uh, here if uh, for example if you have uh, if you have uh, a qubit, in general a qubit now, imagine that you have your qubit Psi. For example, if you have your qubit Psi equals alpha 0 plus beta 1. So for that case, if we apply the, the, the gate Y here, Y psi equals alpha y 0 plus beta y 1 because alpha and beta are scholars so so uh, we can uh, we can interchange between scalar and matrix so that equals because y0 is i1 so I find i alpha 0 and y1 equals minus i0 so this is minus i beta uh, here 1 sorry here this is 1 so minus i beta uh, 0 which uh, means uh, we can write that 
by i times uh, alpha 1 minus beta 0. So this is the action. After that we have what we call Z gate. So now it's time for uh, Z gate. Uh, of course, first of all, we have uh, the gate notation. So the gate uh, notation is that. Z. And matrix representation of Z gate is. So matrix representation is representation is z equals 1 0 0 minus 1 and because we have our matrix representation we can simply we can uh, simply see the action of the Z gate to get 0 and to get 1. So action of the gate, action of action of the gate. So we have Z 0 equals 1 0 0 minus 1 times the cat 0 and the cat 0 equals 1 0 that equals so the result is a Coulomb matrix this is 1 times 1 plus 0 times 0 which means 1 0 times 0 equals 0 minus 1 times 0 equals 0 so the result is 0 so as you can see Z0 is quite simply 0. It's a very uh, it's a pre predictable uh, it's intuitive because it's trivial because here we have 1 and 0 0. So Z0 equals 0. So the action of Z gate to cat 0 is quite simply cat 0. Now what about the action of that gate to cat 1? It's predictable it's minus 1 because here I have minus 1, 0, 0. Look at here. So Z2, uh, Z1 equals 1, 0, 0, minus 1 times 0 1 which equals 1 times 0 equals 0 plus 0 times 1 which equals 0 so the result is 0 0 times 0 equals 0 minus 1 times 1 equals minus 1 so the result is minus 0 1 which equals minus 1 so here z1 equals minus 1 Uh, now, uh, in gen if you have if you have uh, our qubit psi, our qubit psi equals alpha zero plus beta one. So z psi equals alpha z zero plus beta z1 we can interchange because alpha is just a scalar z0 equals 0 so this is just alpha 0 z1 equals minus 1 so this is minus beta 1 okay if we want to use the matrix representation it is alpha minus beta. It's not uh, 
quiet hearts. Uh, here it's more interesting to see the action of the gate Z to cat plus and cat uh, minus. Uh, remember that what is the cat plus and what is the cat minus actually remember that the cat plus remember that the cat plus is 1 over square root of 2 0 plus 1 and the cat minus is 1 over square root of 2 0 minus 1 Let's uh, see how Z gate act on that cat and this another cat. So for Z Z plus equals one over square root of two Z zero plus Z one z0 equals 0 and z1 equals minus 1 which means that 1 over square root of 2 0 minus 1 as you can see z plus equals 1 over square root of 2 0 minus 1 and 1 over square root of 2 0 minus 1 is quite simply the cat minus so this is 1 over this is the cat minus so the action is that z plus equals minus now what about the z minus it's very predictable because z minus equals plus look at here so z plus z minus equals 1 over square root of 2 z 0 minus z1 because minus is uh, 1 over square root of 2 uh, 0 minus 1 that which equals 1 over square root of 2 z0 equals 0 and z1 equals minus 1 which means minus with minus equals plus so this is it so z minus equals that which means plus because 1 over square root of 2 0 plus 1 is plus the cat plus so z minus equals plus so what is the conclusion the conclusion is we have actually two conclusion uh, that minus that minus that you have here minus it's minus 1 if you use trigonometric form that minus is exponential of i pi is the famous equation e i pi plus 1 equals 0 so this says minus 1 and actually this is a phase shift of pi this is a phase shift of pi so this is our conclusion this is our conclusion so the first conclusion is that the z gate applies a phase shift of pi to the state one why pi because we have minus one equals exponential i pi or exponential of i pi resulting in a state of minus one equals exponential i pi one this is the first conclusion what about the second conclusion the second conclusion is about that we have z plus equals minus and z minus equals plus this says the second conclusion about that z plus equals minus and z minus equals plus which means that the z gate flips the ket plus to the ket minus and vice versa
So now it's time for what we call the S gate. Of course, we have gate notation and matrix representation and the action of the gate to get 0 and get 1. So first of that, uh, gate notation. The gate notation is that S and after the gate notation we have matrix matrix representation. Matrix representation. Matrix representation for our uh, gate S is S equals 1, 0, 0, I. Now, what is, uh, what about action of the gate? Action of of the gate. So here we have uh, uh, our matrix representation so it's very simple S0 equals 1 0 0 I times 1 0 which equals 1 times 1 plus 0 times 0 which equals 1 so this is 1 and this is 0 0 times 0 times 1 0 i times 0 0 so this is 0 so s 0 is 1 0 which means that s 0 equals the cat 0 now what about the action of that gate to cat 1 So, the action of uh, the gate S to get 1 equals 1, 0, 0, I times 0, 1, which equals 1 times 0 equals 0, 0 times 1 equals 0, so I have here 0. 0 times 0 equals 0, I times 1 equals I, so I have 0, I which means this is i times 0, 1, which equals i times 1. So s1 equals i1. It's uh, uh, very simple as you can see. And now if we have, for example, uh, qubit psi. Psi equals alpha 0 plus beta 1 then S Psi equals alpha S 0 plus beta S 1 which equals alpha 0 plus I beta 1 because s1 is i1 if I want to use matrix representation so s psi equals alpha i beta so if you have your s gate Zero after a s is, uh, is zero. Don't change. And one after s is i 
one as you can see now it's time for another gate uh, called T gate so six T gate uh, it's also uh, a single a qubit gate so gate notation is for gate notation it's quite simply T like that matrix representation matrix representation T equals 1 0 0 exponential of I pi over 4 now because we have matrix representation the action of the gate is very simple so C action of of the gate so t0 equals 1 0 0 e i pi over 4 0 is 1 0 which equals so the result is a 2 1 matrix because that matrix is a 2 2 the other matrix is 2 1 that 2 goes with that 2 and the result is a 2 1 matrix 2 1 okay 1 times 1 equals 1 so that element for that first element we have 1 times 1 1 times 1 plus 0 times 0 which equals 1 so for the first element this is 1 second element this is 0 so t0 equals 1 0 which means 0 okay now what about the t1 it's not the t the drink no t uh, so here t1 is 1 0 0 exponential i pi over 4 times 0 1 which equals 1 times 0 0 0 times 1 0 so this is 0 0 times 0 0 exponential i pi over 4 times 1 equals exponential i pi over 4 which equals exponential i pi over 4 times 0 1 0 1 is quite simply the ket 1 so it is exponential i pi over 4 times the ket 1 so this is t1 as you can see so if you want to summarize that if you have your t gate t gate For the ket 0 after t gate, we have 0. And for the ket 1 after t gate, for the ket 1, you have exponential i pi over 4, 1. After seeing uh, the notion of uh, qubit, uh, uh, we have uh, also an important concept about qubit called multiple qubit. It's very important because after uh, that uh, we will uh, see the notion of uh, multiple qubit, uh, the notion of uh, quantum gates uh, and exactly single quantum gates and uh, multiple uh, qubit gates. For single quantum gates if you have a single for single quantum gate that single quantum gate 
acts on a qubit, a single qubit, single qubit, or quite simply, or just qubit, single qubit, single qubit is zero and one, and also a superposition superposition of those. 0 and 1 which means alpha 0 plus beta 1 in general but for multiple quantum gates for multiple quantum gates multiple quantum gates acts on at least two qubit so that act on multiple qubit and this is the goal of that introduction about multiple qubit. First, we have a recall about what we call tensor product. For tensor product, imagine that we have uh, two vectors. Also, in Euclidean space, imagine that you have a certain U. And I want here to use... Uh, the matrix representation of that vector, which means the Coulomb vector. Imagine that the, the component of U is A and B, and you have a certain vector V equals A, uh, D, or C and D. Uh, we uh, denote the, the tensor product, uh, tensor product is denoted by that we have a circle and a cross in the middle this is the the, no, the, the notation about of a tensor product and the tensor product is between that vector u and v actually i can add u and v for vector notation cross uh, ten, u tensor v is equals a b tensor c d and how we do the calculation it's uh, very easy so we take that a and that a times c d this is the technique and the b times C, D, etc. So the result is A times C and A times D, B times C and B times D. This is the result. So as you can see, the dimension here changes to here. The, we begin with two, two dimension here and two dimension here, and the result is four dimension. We have another example. If you want a1, a2, a3, a4, and here b1, b2, b3, b4. So here u tensor v equals the same technique actually a1 times all that b1, b2, b3, b4, a2 times b1, b2, b3, b4. I need some space here and a3 times b1, b2, b3, and b4. Uh, so I need uh, some spaces I continue here so and a four times b1 b2 b3 and b4 and the result is so u tensor v is a1 times b1 a1 times b2 a1 times b3 a1 
times b4 we finish with that and after a2 times b1 a2 times b2 a2 times b3 a2 times b4 we finish with that and uh, a3 times uh, b1 a3 times b2 a3 times b3 a3 times b4 we finish with that and finally a4 times b1 a4 times b2 a4 times b3 and a4 times b4 and actually this is the result as you can see we have here 16 elements so from so the rule is 4 times 4 equals 16 because we begin with that this is a 4 vector this is a 4 dimension and the result is 16 so here this is a uh, just uh, an example about that so for example if you want multiple qubit how can you do this see you for the next lecture now we have the notion of multiple qubit we have examples uh, actually uh, for uh, the computational basis for a single qubit we have 0 and 1 actually but imagine if you want to write the multiple the the multiple qubit and exactly two qubit for two qubit we have four computational bases and it it's zero zero one zero zero one and one one and actually this is one of the example about multiple qubit and we need to know the matrix representation of all those multiple qubit actually that notation is quite simply the tensor products between the ket 0 and the ket 0 and this is why we seen the tensor product before that here recall that recall that the matrix representation of 0 is 0 one, is 1 0 and the matrix representation of 1 is 0 1 then that tensor product is 1 0 tensor 1 0 and that equals so we have that one times one zero and that zero times one zero and the result is one times one which equals one one times zero which equals zero zero times zero equals zero and finally zero so this is for zero zero what about for one zero for one zero this is one tensor zero and one is zero one and zero is one zero the result is zero times one zero and one times one zero that equals zero times one equals zero zero times zero equals zero one times one equals one one times zero equals zero so this is for one zero and now what about zero one zero one is zero tensor one and that equals one zero tensor zero one that equals one times zero one zero times zero one equals 
1 times 0 which equals 0, 1 times 1 which equals 1, 0 times 0 which equals 0, 0 times 1 which equals 0. And finally, what about for 1, 1? 1, 1 is 0, is uh, 1 tensor 1 which equals 0, 1 tensor 0, 1 that equals 0 times 0, 1 and 1 times 0, 1. That equals 0 times 0 which equals 0, 0 times 1 which equals 0, 1 times 0 equals 0 and 1 times 1 equals 1. So this is for 1, 1, this is for 0, 1 and this is for 1, 0. So if we want to summarize that, the matrix representation of 0, 0 is 1, 0, 0, 0. The matrix representation for 1. So if you want, we can begin with 0, 1. And the matrix representation for 0, 1 is 0, 1, 0, 0. The matrix representation for 1, 0 is 0, 0, 1, 0. And finally, the matrix representation for 1, 1, it's 0, 0, 0, 1, quite simply. So after seeing uh, single uh, qubit gates, uh, now it's time for what we call multiple qubit gates. Why this is uh, multiple? Because that multiple uh, qubit uh, gates can act at least on at least on two qubit uh, uh, state. So for C not gate. Uh, before talking about that uh, that gate, uh, the effect of the synod gate or its description, let's begin with its matrix representation. With that, we can easily discover how the synod gate acts with a simple matrix uh, calculation. So, first of all, we have, of course, our gate notation. So for the gate notation A, this is gate notation. Actually for uh, our C0 gate, this is a 2 qubit gate. For C0 gate, this is a 2 qubit gate. So we have like a uh, wire, this is actually quantum, quantum wire, it's just uh, a way uh, to, to tell things, okay? So here we have a certain point, and after that point we have our not gate for the second qubit. Here, let's uh, uh, focus about uh, the name C0. C0 actually C0 is short for controlled controlled not. So we have here two qubit, the first qubit here and the second qubit. For the first qubit, the first qubit is called the control qubit. And that con and we have a control qubit and also a target. The target is that second qubit that we have here. So that qubit is the control qubit actually and here of course we have the target qubit okay so what is the matrix representation of C0 gate 
matrix, so B matrix representation. After that, we uh, we are going to see why control qubit, target qubit, and how that's you not know, gate act. So, for the matrix representation, representation, the thing that we have here is so for C naught. This is the notation of uh, matrix, just C naught. This is a 4-4 four, four matrix, uh, a huge matrix. We have 1, 0, 0, 0, 0, 1, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 1, 1, 0, 0, 0. So this is our matrix representation. So after that matrix representation, we can see how that C naught gate acts. So action of the gate. Because here this is a two qubit gate. So first C action of the gate. Action of the gate. That gate is uh, a two qubit gate, so it acts on four two qubit basis states. What about our four uh, four uh, qubit basis states? Our four qubit basis states is so as you can see we have two places. This is a this is a two qubit. For example, we can have zero zero one zero etc. And actually, this is a tensor product. This is a tensor product, for example, if you have 0, 0, 0, 0 is quite simply 0, tensor product 0. And for uh, what about our four, four computational basis states for 2 qubit? Here, our computational basis state is 0, 0, 0, 1, 1, 0, and finally 1, 1. Actually, we can write the matrix representation of 0, 0, 0, 1, 1, 0, and 1, 1 by using tensor products and the definition of tensor product. For example, for 0, 0, what is 0, 0? 0, 0 is quite simply 0, tensor product 0, which equals the matrix representation of 0, of get 0, is 1, 0. The representation of 0 is tensor product is 1, 0. So that equals 1. Look at the rule. We already seen that in uh, uh, mathematical prequisite. So we have 1, 1 times 1 times all that, which means it's like that. And we have 0 times all that is like that. So that equals 1 times 1 is 1. 1 times 0 equals 0. 0 times 0 equals 0. 0 times 0 equals 0. So the matrix representation of 0, 0 is 1, 0, 0, 0.
this is our C naught. So C naught, I can write C naught here. C naught is one zero one zero 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 zero. Uh, zero one one zero 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 and now what about the one the zero one the matrix representation for zero one for zero one is zero tensor product one which equals so zero is one zero tensor product 1 is 1, 0, that equals 1 times 0, 1, 0, 0, 1, which equals 1 times 0 is 0, 1 times 1 is 1, 0, 0, 0, 1, 0. So this is the matrix representation for 0, 1. What about 1, 0? For 1, 0, 1 tensor product 0 which equals 0 1 tensor product 1 0 that equals 0 1 0 1 1 0 that equals 0 times 1 0 0 times 0 0 1 times 1 1 1 times 0 0 Zero zero one zero is so therefore zero one is that uh, now what about for one 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 is zero one tensor zero one which equals zero times zero one one times zero one which equals 0 times 0 is 0, 0 times 1 is 0, 1 times 0 is 0, 1 times 1 is 1. So this is for 0, 0, 0, 1, and 1, 0. So if we want to summarize that, we have. So for our computational basis, for 2 qubit basis, we have so we have for zero zero is uh, one zero 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 for zero one is uh, zero one zero zero for one zero is zero zero one zero and finally for one one is zero 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 one okay and now we can do the calculation we can see how the controlled not act on zero 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 one one zero and one one so uh, it's uh, a simple calculation here so we have c not times zero zero the first two qubit zero zero uh, belong uh, the the four uh, computational basis states uh, for two qubit uh, states actually so c naught is the matrix representation of c naught is that one zero 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 etc yes please wait <laughs> This is a huge, ma a huge matrix. Yes, zero zero is one zero 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 
Yes, of course. So, what is the result of C0? The result of C0 is very uh, trivial here. Because we have here a 4-4 four, four matrix. As you can see here, this is a 4-4 four, four matrix. And this is a 4-1 matrix because we have 1, 2, 3, 4 and 1. So this is the 4-1 matrix. That 4 goes with that 4 and the result is a 4-1 matrix. Therefore, we find like a Coulomb vector with four rows. So this is a Coulomb matrix. First element, second, third and fourth element. For that first element, it's quite simply one. Look at here, row by Coulomb. So this is one times one plus zero times zero plus zero times zero plus zero times zero which equals one so we have here one for the f second element zero times one zero one zero 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 so this is zero that zero 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 so this is zero zero times one equals zero zero times zero equals zero one times zero equals zero 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 so the result is one zero 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 which equals quite simply zero zero because one zero 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 is zero zero the multiple qubit zero zero now what about for zero one for zero one so for zero one uh, so C not for uh, zero one equals so we have one zero zero one etc times zero one zero one is zero one zero zero which equals the same thing we have a coulomb matrix with four rows and one coulomb so this is one times zero all that element is zero it's it's a, it's trivial that element zero times zero zero one times one one plus zero plus zero so this is zero uh, this is one and for that zero and zero and what is this element? This element is quite simply 0, 1. Now, what about 1, 0? C0 1, 0, 1, 0, 0 equals we have one zero 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 one zero 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 one zero 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 one zero for one zero this is zero zero one zero and that equals zero 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 and one finally because here one times zero 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 times zero zero one times zero 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 times one zero 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 is zero but here zero times zero 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 times zero zero plus one times one which means one for for the the last which means one so we find that so this is that equals the qubit the multiple qubit one 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 as you can see so here it's interesting and what about c not one one for c not one one c 
cnot one 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 zero 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 one zero 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 one zero zero one zero times zero 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 one that equals that the first element is zero the second is zero the third is one and the fourth is zero so here c not one one equals so if you want to summarize that if you want to summarize look at here look at here look at here please so we have c not zero zero equals zero zero we have c not zero one equals zero one we have c not one zero equals one one we have c not one one equals one zero as you can see here look at here look at here we have here zero zero one and one and remember our representation of the c naught gate is that so we have here we have here the control qubit and here the target qubit as you can see here if the control qubit equals zero the target qubit doesn't change here I have zero I have zero and because I have zero the target qubit doesn't change here zero the target qubit one doesn't change but if the control qubit equals one the target qubit as you can see change here we had zero and the the target qubit becomes one here the control qubit equals one and one change to zero okay so if you want to summarize that if the control qubit equals zero the target qubit doesn't change if the control qubit equals one the target the, if the control qubit equals one the target qubit changes so I have for you summarize for that so here if you have that if you have here zero okay and here you have one here you have zero and here one because the control qubit is zero if you have zero and here zero you have here zero and here zero Be because the, the the control qubit is zero if you have so here this is uh, this is zero one actually this is zero zero this is zero one this is zero zero if you have uh, one if you have that that thing and here zero so here we ha you have one but because the control qubit equals one then here the result that zero becomes one so here you had zero one and finally you have one one
for if you have here one and here you have one so because you have here one so here one actually actually the control qubit doesn't change the target qubit change here the control qubit doesn't change doesn't say doesn't change but it changed because he, here i have one here one becomes zero because the ta the, the control qubit equals one so here you had one one and the result is one zero yes this is uh, the first uh, exercise uh, about uh, synot gate so for exercise one uh, we tell us uh, that uh, to use uh, a C not uh, gate to create the state 0 1 from the state 0 0 how we can uh, do this uh, it's uh, not very difficult the thing is about the comprehension of the question so here we want to uh, create uh, the state that state that uh, two qubit from the state zero zero uh, you need to pay attention here because if you use directly just uh, a c not uh, gate like uh, that if you use if, if if we start from the state 0 0 like that if we start from 0 0 we cannot obtain directly 0 1 so pay attention this is impossible directly this is impossible the thing is that we have to start if you use just C not gate like that we obtain just 0 0 here uh, the state 0 0 is remember that the state 0 0 itself is the tensor product 0 0 then we have here two qubit we have the first qubit and the second qubit and actually uh, uh, writing the thing like that if you write the thing like that for example here this is a quantum circuit actually zero zero is uh, the tensor product between that which equals zero zero this is just a remark for you so if you want to uh, to have that state it's uh, a very simple first uh, because uh, C naught, if you have the C naught gate, we have uh, this is a controlled not gate. The first qubit, the, the first qubit is the control uh, uh, qubit, and the second qubit is the target qubit. So f we have, sorry, if uh, we write this like that, x and y. The first is the control and the second is the target. So here uh, the target uh, qubit uh, change, changes only and uh, if uh, only uh, if uh, the control uh, qubit uh, equals uh, 1. So the the first uh, reaction uh, that uh, we have uh, to uh, to do here is to change the first qubit. So how can we change the first qubit? So let's begin to to create our circuit. So here the the first state is zero zero. So we have the first qubit. The second. Okay, so here uh, we uh, we should uh, change that first qubit by applying a not 
gate you know that the notation of node gate is x or that this is also you can also denote a node gate by that or also we can use an x you can also use for node gate you can also use this So we apply a not we apply a node gate here and after that because we want zero one so here the control and the not is here so control not but because after after that not gate we have actually one so because this is one the not can act on that qubit so after that we obtain one so here the qubit that we have here is 1 1 but as we want uh, we want 0 1 so all the thing that we have to use is to add another not gate here so by applying another not another not gate here we obtain for that first qubit one uh, no zero because we had one so after that gate we have zero so after that gate we have here 0 and here 1 and here 1 therefore here the qubit the state that we have is 0 1 okay so if you want a recapitulation is that so from the state 0 0 this is the state 0 0 quantum wire control uh, before control we have uh, a knot gate here after control not and we should add another not gate here and finally we obtain here 0 and here 1 then our state after that is 0 1 that is two about you know the gate and also, uh, we can uh, tell uh, that this is an exercise also about Hadamard gate. So, uh, the uh, exercise demand that to create the first Bell state, uh, that state is called Bell state. Uh, we are going to see that Bell state in the part about in entanglement. So, th this says actually it is a qubit. So, we can do that. Uh, by using a certain exercise and it is a do thing. Uh, 
uh, it is a good thing. Uh, the first best state, uh, phi plus, uh, this is just a notation, phi plus, for the first best state we can denote, uh, we can denote it by phi plus, equals 1 over square root of 2, 0, 0, plus 1, 1, using Hadamai gate and Sinot gate. Let's do this. So, for the first, uh, we have that uh, two qubit and this another qubit. So, first of all, it's uh, very important to create a superposition state. So, imagine that if, uh, uh, for example, if we begin with uh, the first, uh, with a certain uh, qubit uh, 0, 0, 2 qubit 0, 0. If you want to begin with that, so start f from that uh, uh, two qubit. Let's do this. We we can start from that uh, two qubit. So we have the first uh, qubit zero. It's actually it's a cat. Yes, uh, zero and so we have this wire and the other qubit zero. So here we want to create that zero one and of course one over square root of two. It's very simple. We have just to use for a Hadamard gate. So let's do this. Hadamar gate here. After that Hadamar gate, after that Hadamar gate, here, just here, we have, after that Hadamar gate, we have one over square root of 2, 0 plus 1. And if I want the state here, the state, my state, all the state, I have, for the first qubit, I have 0, 1, and for second qubit, I have 0. So I have 1 over square root of 2 0 and for second qubit, I have 0 plus 1 for the first and for second, I have 0. But me, I want, I want that Bell's state. So how can I change to that, to this other Bell state? It's very simple. All the thing that we have to do is add a control not gate here. Why? It's very clever and it's very easy to add that because as you can see here you have that zero. So I can use that zero as a control qubit for controlling that qubit. So this is the target because I want here this that zero zero because this is zero, that target doesn't change. But here, look at on that one. I have that one. So here, the target qubit changes. Because this is one, and this is a property for our control, controlled not gate, C not gate. So here, 
Look at with me here. After that, I add my my control. I control the thing here, and I add my notes here. And because of that, because of that, here remember that I have zero plus one. Of course, one over square root two, square root of two. And here zero. So after that, after after that not, this actually is C not. So, for that zero, because I have zero, the first doesn't change. The No, this is not the first, but uh, I talk about the target. So, I have here zero plus one after all, yes. But here, if that one... For that first, because I have zero here, I have, I can obtain zero, one. So look at here with me. If I want the state here after that C naught, because here I have zero, The the fur the second qubit doesn't change. So after that I have after that I have one over square root of two zero zero plus because I have here one so one and don't have zero here but I have one because here the the control qubit is one so the zero becomes one that zero becomes one and i create the bell state the first bell state phi plus so here we have after that a recapitulation so for the first bell state we can start with the qubit zero zero after the qubit zero zero for the for that first qubit we apply the hadamar the hadamar gate h after that we just apply a c naught gate like that so here after that, I have here the qubit that I have is for the first wire, I have 1 over square root of 2, 0 plus 1. But the, the result qubit, 2 qubit is 1 over square root of 2, 0, 0 plus 1, 0. And after C naught, after C naught, I have one over square root of two. Here doesn't change because zero, but here change because one plus one one. So if we want to create the the first bare state, all the thing that we have to do is that so if we wanted to create the bell state this is the circuit and the result is phi plus equals one over square root of two zero zero plus one one of course this is zero zero plus one one over square root of two we are still with the 
quantum gates and exactly multiple qubit qubit gates now it's time for cz uh, gate uh, c this is a uh, controlled z first of all gate notation actually it's <coughs> it's uh, nearly like uh, control uh, not gate but instead of uh, not we have z so for the gate notation we have our wire and the control but here we have the gate z we have the gate z now it's uh, interesting to to look at uh, the matrix notation of uh, controlled z gate so for the matrix notation we have matrix notation cz equals we have a part for the first part of 2 2 the that first part is just an identity matrix like uh, C not gate so we have 1 1 0 0 and that part all that part we have 0 0 0 and 0 0 0 0 0 and actually here we have the uh, Z uh, the, the part of Z matrix we have Z matrix here and the uh, so we can uh, write here matrix representation it's not a problem matrix representation so we have here 1 minus 1 0 0 this is uh, the Z uh, matrix so here uh, it's uh, we don't need to do uh, uh, many calculation to, to see how the CZ gate acts to uh, different uh, uh, two qubit states which means uh, 0 0 0 1 1 0 and 1 1 because we understand that if the first qubit here is uh, 0 the second qubit doesn't change which means which, which means that the z gate don't act but if the first qubit is 1 the z gate can act and the second qubit changes so we can use this way for finding the action of the gate so see action of the gate action of the gate so if we want to know the action of our gate uh, we have So the action of the gate, uh, of course, uh, the action of the gate on uh, on different uh, uh, two qubit uh, states, which means uh, zero zero uh, zero one one zero and one one, and actually this is what we called the computational basis if we have for two qubit so for zero zero it's quite simple it doesn't change because the first qubit here because that first qubit equals zero so the CZ here C CZ zero zero equals zero zero now CZ the same thing for zero one 
that equals zero one because the first that first qubit is zero and C Z one zero equals actually even though that the first qubit equals one the second doesn't change because remember that the action of Z gate the action of Z gate to K0 doesn't change we have zero but Z for one equals minus one so we add this is uh, so the action of uh, the Z gate uh, it had a phase shift of pi because that minus which means that minus one is exp exponential i pi so uh, it add uh, a phase shift uh, equals pi so here uh, even though we have here one the the, the result is one zero but now uh, what about cz one one here the action because the first qubit is one then the z acts here acts here and we know that z one equals minus one so the result is so that minus is here one one okay so this is the action of our gate so actually here if I want to to uh, details uh, here CZ act on one tensor product one and because of that the first qubit is one then Z can act here so it's like we have that so that minus goes here so we have minus one tensor product one which means minus one one so as you can see that minus one is also exponential i pi of one one so here as you can see it is a, a phase shift of pi so if you want to uh, summarize uh, that if uh, we want to use uh, our circuit so you have here if you have zero 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 remains zero 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 one the same thing doesn't change if you have one zero doesn't change because z zero equals zero actually here z act on that qubit but because of z0 equals 0 but we have 0 but here we have 1 1 but if you have here 1 the 1 becomes minus 1 easy gate uh, exercise 
uh, we want to show that that circuit is equivalent to that uh, here we have a CZ uh, gate controlled Z gate but here uh, we have it's like a ZC uh, gate if uh, I want to do this uh, if I want to tell that this is ZC the control is here and not here but actually we don't have uh, this notation but it's just a way to explain you this okay so if you want to, to show that it's uh, very simple other thing that uh, we have to do is uh, uh, is uh, uh, using some uh, two qubit here qubit here and the qubit and uh, see uh, the result uh, to do the, to do that we need to see the action of that on different two qubit zero 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 one one zero and one one for zero zero is uh, uh, trivial for zero zero we have that so zero 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 for that first the result is zero zero the same thing for cz so for that first qubit both this circuit and this circuit are equivalent because here if you have zero zero the result is zero zero as you can see now what about for zero one the same thing for zero one look at here because we have just zero actually the the control uh, here is one so the z can act but we know that z zero is quite simply zero so I have that so the result as you can see here the result is zero one now for the other we have zero Z and one the result here is zero the result is one because the control qubit equals zero so as you can see the result is the same zero one zero one so both of those for that case are equivalent now for one zero for one zero we have here one and here zero actually we have one zero because the control uh, qubit equals uh, zero for the c z here we have one here zero because uh, uh, we have just zero may uh, even though we have here one for the control qubit that doesn't change because z zero is always equal is equals zero so as you can see we have the same qubit here now it's going to be interesting for the last the last uh, qubit which means one 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 
for that first case uh, one and here we have one so the result after one is quite simply minus one because uh, no no I am so sorry about that uh, here we have one but because the control is one then the z acts on that one and the result is minus one but the result after that is quite simply minus one one look at for the cz we have one one the control equals one so z can act so this is minus one and here one but the result after all is minus one one so as you can see as you can see here uh, the bot that circuit is equivalent to that so now it's time for another multiple qubit uh, gates actually and ex exactly this is a two qubit uh, state that uh, this is a two qubit uh, gate that qubit is a swap gate uh, first we have uh, our gate notation of course uh, uh, we have a wire we have uh, a thing like an X another wire like that a thing like an X and the connection this is the gate notation now what about the matrix representation the, we use the the word swap for matrix representation swap equals one zero 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 one zero zero one zero 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 one so this is the uh, matrix representation of a uh, swap gate now uh, if you want uh, b because we have now the matrix representation of that gate we can see how that gate acts to for different uh, two qubit states so action of the gate of swap gate action of the gate so for the action we have uh, the action of course for 0 0 uh, 0 1 1 0 and finally 1 1 so here I need actually the matrix representation of uh, those uh, four multiple Q bit recall we already seen this uh, in uh, in uh, uh, for C not gate so 0 0 equals 1 0 0 it's just a recall we already seen how, why that equals that and 0 1 y equals 0 1 0 0 and 1 0 equals 0 0 1 0 and finally 1 1 equals 0 0 0 1 you should know that so what is now the action of swap to 0 0 swap is that matrix 1 0 0 0 0 1 0 yes yes 0 0 is 1 0 0 0 uh, so this is the result is uh, of 4 1 matrix a Coulomb matrix that part times that part equals 1 that part with that part 0 0 and 0 of course so as you can see the action then the action because 1 0 0 0 equals 0 0 so the action of swap to 
the cat zero zero equals zero zero. Now swap zero one. Swap zero one the matrix times the qubit which means zero one zero zero. That equals that part with that part zero, that part with that part zero times zero zero, zero times one zero, one times zero zero zero. So this is zero. That part equals one zero times zero zero, one times one one plus zero plus plus zero plus zero. So this is one. That part is zero. So that equals as you can see one zero because zero zero one zero equals uh, one zero actually. So the action of swap to zero one equals one zero. Now what about for so swap swap for uh, one uh, zero. Here we have just to use uh, matrix. Matrix is uh, that times one zero one zero is zero zero one zero so that equals for the first element is trivial is zero for the second element zero times uh, zero is zero zero times zero is zero one times one is one so one plus the other zero which means one that zero and that zero it's very trivial you can see ya uh, you can verify that zero and zero it's very simple so zero one zero zero is uh, zero one the qubit zero one so as you can see the swap swap one zero equals zero one now what about swap one one swap one one our matrix representation and uh, one one is uh, zero 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 one so that equals uh, the first part is zero, the second part is zero, the third part is zero because here I have zero zero. It's very uh, intuitive. That part is one because I have here one. Zero 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 one is quite simply the one one. So as you can see, swap. 1 1 equals 1 1 and here it's time for uh, for the conclusion what is the conclusion then so uh, we have all the actions here so as you can see the action of swap to zero zero is zero zero the action of uh, swap zero one is one zero the action of swap one zero is zero one the action of swap one one is one one so the, the thing is like a swap gate swaps the values of two qubits in the quantum state as you can see here the zero one be becomes one zero swap the one zero becomes zero one swap is like that the action of a swap is like that if this is the swap so for that gate the result is something like that so if I want to summarize that if you have so if you have for example here 
1 and here 0 so the result after the gate is 0 1 swap if you have here 0 here 1 the action is 1 here and 0 here I can use another color as you can see this is 1 that one is here and this is 0 this is 1 and this is uh, 1 but for uh, 0 0 if you have 0 0 it's uh, uh, it's uh, same state because we have we have 0 0 if you have for example here 0 0 then the result is just 0 0 the same thing here okay now it's time for a very interesting uh, multiple cube qubit uh, gates called uh, Toffoli gate actually Toffoli gate is uh, a three qubit uh, gate so uh, the concept about Toffoli gate is uh, is about C not C not gate imagine that uh, we have two controlled two control qubit and one target bit if you have two control uh, qubit and one uh, target qubit this is what we called Toffoli gate quite simply so uh, the gate notation is for Toffoli gate gate notation because this is a, a, a 3 qubit gate so we have three wire the first wire the second wire and the third wire and because this is Toffoli gate is actually this is what we call also C C not gate because we have two control qubit so we have the first control and the second and of course here we have the not the not gate here we have the not gate here so this is the gate notation Now, what about the action of the gate? The action of the gate can act on uh, eight uh, different uh, qubits. Why? Because the three qubit basis states has eight different qubits because we have one two three this is a three qubit therefore we have eight uh, eight uh, three qubit for three qubit uh, basis states so B this is action of the gate action of the gate uh, because we already seen C not gate if you have your C not gate for C not for C not for C not you have the control qubit here and the target qubit here the target qubit changes only and only if the control qubit equals 1 so if you have here 1 that qubit changes of course you have 
here 1 but if you have for example 0 you have here 1 because the control qubit equals 1 but for Toffoli gate the control the, the target qubit changes only and only of uh, uh, only and only if both of two control qubits are equals 1 therefore the only situation that the target qubit changes only if you have here 1 and here 1 so for that case if you have here 0 therefore because both of two control qubit equals 1 therefore that qubit changes to 1 and the other situation is that situation of course if you have that 1 and 1 and if your target qubit is 1 therefore the result is 0 but for the other 3 qubits actually after that we have a recapitulation about that so after that if you have for example 1 and here 0 for that situation the second control qubit equals 0 then the target qubit doesn't change doesn't change even though one of control qubit equals 1 so if you have here 1 here you have 1 and if you have 0 you have here 0 okay this is our recapitulation about Toffoli gate first we have gate notation and what about action of the gate here the three qubit basis states is we have uh, eight uh, different uh, three uh, qubit we have 0 0 0 1 0 0 0 1 0 0 0 1 1 1 0 1 0 1 1 uh, 0 1 1 and 1 1 1 here uh, the only case that the three qubit changes if the both two control qubit equals one so this is the only case that the target qubit can change so as you can see for that case the three qubit changes so one one zero becomes one 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 and one 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 becomes one one zero but for that case as you can see there is no change this is a recap about our circuit for different situation the only case that we have change is that this is the only case one 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 zero because here the control qubit equals one the first and the second so the third changes the same thing here but here we don't have changement because we don't have the condition because the condition is that both of two control qubits must be one remark this is matrix representation for cc not gate it is a very huge matrix as you can see it is an 8 8 matrix because the three 
qubit basis state contains eight qubits. In this part, we uh, we want to install uh, Anaconda to use uh, Jupyter Notebook. So download uh, Anaconda, and uh, after that, you can uh, install it. After the installation, open Anaconda Navigator. And after that, we need to install, uh, if uh, you don't have Jupyter, you need to install Jupyter Notebook and uh, Jupyter Lab. Install Jupyter Lab. So after the installation of uh, Jupyter Lab, we can use uh, Jupyter Notebook directly or Jupyter Lab, it's not a problem. Uh, we can use Jupyter Notebook for the instance to install our Kiskit. So you create a new file. And this is it. We install our Kiskit. I have for you an uh, a code if you want to uh, to test that your Kiskit is uh, installed I have for you a code you can use it and test if all the thing is good for example here me uh, personally I use Jupyter Lab so launch Jupyter Lab because uh, we can have many files uh, by using uh, Jupyter Lab. Many file, many files uh, at the same time. So here, this is uh, an example of our code. It's not important to understand. For example, if you test that code, it's just to copy we have just to copy that uh, and run that cell and this another You can find that that code uh, in uh, Udemy course. In my Udemy course, I, I want to add that code for you for testing if uh, everything uh, is work. So after executing that first cell, it's very important to wait in that cell. If you have a star don't execute that you must to execute that cell first and this another or you can also do this it's also interesting to execute that cell like that and uh, if you have that then you don't have any problem we can also add that want to test the other tools so you can test uh, that uh, also so it works we can also test this part Okay, we can also test block multi vector. Run it, it works. 
we can test histogram run it it works so if everything is good then uh, you you install uh, Kiskit successively so uh, after that I have to add you that line of codes etc actually in this course we want to use exactly Jupyter lab so we can for example uh, add a new uh, notebook if you want and uh, the win code like here and if you want execute run by that etc so using anaconda open a new uh, jupyter notebook and there is our first code about by using Kiskit. so uh, first it's important to import the necessary classes and functions from the Kiskit library uh, that we will use to create and simulate quantum circuits so to do that the first line of code and the fundamental line is that so from Kiskit import so all uh, the necessary object is quantum register we need also classical register and of course our uh, quantum uh, circuit so this is the first line uh, I, I use uh, uh, another another cell uh, just for you to uh, uh, to, to uh, for explaining the part of uh, uh, creating our quantum circuit and uh, drawing uh, our quantum circuit of course so first we need uh, to create a quantum register a quantum register with one qubit just one qubit for that first code and we need also a classical register with one classical uh, bit so here uh, I use a variable QR for my quantum register so we create a quantum register called QR so this is quantum register with one qubit with one qubit and we can call that uh, quantum register by using the letter Q this is optional you can just do this but I use I I, I, I tell that uh, I called that quantum register by Q now I need also a classical register called CR with one classical qubit so CR equals classical uh, classical register classical register with one classical bit and that called C and that we initialize a quantum circuit called QC with what so this is our quantum circuit called QC with the quantum register QR and the classical register CR and after that we want to add a measurement gate to the quantum circuit QC to do that because we want to add a measurement measurement gate to the quantum circuit we do to the quantum circuit called QC that quantum circuit so this is QC dot measure and uh, here we want to measure the qubit QR and store the result to CR here as you can see 
the first element here is qr0 and not qr of 1 qr of 0 and finally we want to draw our circuit to do that this is just qc dot draw so we want to draw the quantum circuit qc using the mat the matplotlib output format so draw and the output equals matplotlib so which means mpl and after that we execute our cell so for the first the first is very important because we want to import all that yes it ex we we just execute that first cell the second cell run and this is our quantum circuit this is a simple quantum circuit actually here uh, you must to know that uh, by default the first any qubit that we have here it is the qubit zero Z that zero means quite sim means quite simply that zero that zero here so after that we want to apply an x gate to our circuit so here we have the preceding circuit uh, now uh, so uh, first of all it's very important to see the preceding part it's very important now we want to add uh, an x gate to our circuit and exactly we want to apply an x gate to that first qubit here actually that first qubit e equals uh, zero we can uh, verify that uh, qubit x uh, th that uh, qubit <laughs> the first qubit equals zero by using uh, a method so but before do that we it's very important uh, to import uh, the necessary libraries from Qiskit to execute that. So first from Qiskit import AR and execute. So here the comment of that is importing, uh, importing the necessary libraries from Qiskit. Actually the, the AR module provides access uh, do Qiskit's uh, high performance simulators and emulators. Uh, the execute uh, method is used to run a quantum circuit on a back end. And now we need our simulator, of course. So, simulator is simulator is AR. So, AR dot get backend and state vector simulator so here setting up a state vector simulator backend using the get backend method from AR the state vector simulator backend simulates the quantum circuit and returns the final state vector so this says it's very important that cell is very important so we run it and after running that that cell we have so the result is the result is execute 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 what our quantum circuit called qc backend equals simulator dot result of course so here we have executing the quantum circuit qc on the simulator backend using the execute method the actually the backend the parameter specify the backend specifies the backend on which 
to execute the circuit, the resulting result object contains information about the simulation. And now we have state vector. We can use another another thing. We can use state. It's not important. So state import state vector equals result dot get backend uh, no the get state vector and uh, so here retrieving the state vector from the result object using get state vector method the state vector variables variable stores the resulting state vector and now we can print our state vector so this is a way to to show what is that qubit and run that cell so that one plus zero j is zero plus zero j is what in theory is that so we have one plus 0j 0, 0 plus 0j zero so this is a, a complex number so that actually represent 0j is equals 0 so 1 plus 0 equals 1 0 plus 0j equals 0 so actually this is the vector the the coulomb matrix which means the vector the vector 1 0 which means the ket 0 so here this is by default the qubit the qubit zero zero the qubit zero now if we want to add an x gate to our circuit here and exactly specifically to that quantum bit that first quantum bit qr of zero so we have uh, we can rewrite uh, it's uh, important to rewrite that because we already have that circuit so we declare that we redeclare that and if you want to add actually a Q uh, an X gate the syntax is like that so we want to add our X gate to our quantum circuit so we have qc dot x but specifically to our first qubit q0 okay and now we want to measure so qc the dot measure qr 0 cr 0 we already seen the the meaning of that and after we want to draw our circuit by using uh, matplotlib output format so output equals mpl and we can execute that cell so as you can see we have our x here we have our x here as you can see now uh, we want to verify that result by using that but before to do that so you have just to to copy that code And execute and as you can see you have our our state vector here as you can see what we have here so the thing that we have here is quite simply 0 plus 0 J 1 plus 0 J which equals 0 1 
and this is quite simply 0 1 which means the the kit 1 the kit 1 okay after that we have another way to represent that called block sphere we already see uh, block sphere in theory and plot histogram here we go the other way if you want to represent the our state uh, there is another way by using what we called block sphere so to do so we it's very important to import what we called the plot block multivector function from the Qiskit Tools visualization module. So from uh, from Qiskit dot tools <laughs> dot visualization import plot block multi vector and we should execute that and after that all the thing that we have to do is plot right plot block multi vector state vector run and we have our beautiful block sphere as you can see this is our qubit one this is cube so here the state is that so that state is actually that state you see did you see that state is that state yes so uh, it's very beautiful imagine that if you want for example to plot that qubit here you must to re-execute that and not just that but also that cell And we have our qubit zero as you can see it's very beautiful finally we have another way that way is what we called histogram A histogram way so we have so job equals execute qc ar dot get backend and we use here the chasm simulator and the number i i, I explained to you this D don't worry and shoot equals that number so here running the quantum circuit qc on the chasm simulator using the execute method the short parameter here equals so here i use we use the chasm simulator the number of short is 1024 the short parameter specify the numbers of times the circuit should be executed because actually you know that quantum mechanics is probabilistic is probabilistic actually the resulting job object contains information about the job execution so here we have counts counts equals job dot result dot dot get Backend. 
No, not backend. Sorry, because I already use backend. No, get counts. Counts QC. So here we have retrieving the counts of each output state from the job object using get counts. Counts QC. The counts that variable, the counts variables, stores the result, the resulting count. And it's important to import from Qiskit dot visualization import import plot histogram plot histogram. And finally, of course, plotting the histogram of the counts using plot histogram. So here we plot a histogram, plot histogram and exactly counts and run that cell. And as you can see, we have our beautiful histogram here. This is the probability. Of course, because we have one qubit, the, the probability is one, which means that 100%, of course. That's zero because we have qubit zero. Okay. So this is uh, our first simple code and it is a basic code. It's very important and we want to use all that code for the other quantum gates. So now it's time for a Hadamard gate. Uh, so uh, we need, uh, first of all, to import a uh, uh, necessary object from, from the Qiskit library. To do that, uh, uh, we can use the start. So from Qiskit import all all is uh, star that star means uh, quantum register classical register ar execute etc okay so after that we create a single qubit quantum register called qr so qr with one with uh, with uh, one qubit so it's a single qubit so quantum register with one qubit and called q uh, and a classical register cr with with a single bit so classical register with single qubit called C. Uh, now we create a quantum circuit QC with the register Q, QR and CR. So QC is our quantum circuit with the registers Q, R, and C, R uh, is uh, equals. So uh, we now apply a Hadamard gate. So the syntax is Q, C, the Hadamard gate to the qubit in the Q, R register at first index and first index here by default is zero using the quantum circuit qc so qc dot h of qr of zero now uh, before we want to see the state vector so before to do a measurement because a measurement because a measurement can modify the state so be before to do a measurement, we can print our state vector. So to do that, 
So we can, uh, uh, we must run that cell. It's important. We import all necessary objects. Yes, so after that cell, so we have our circuit here. And now we want uh, to, to create a simulator backend called simulator using the state vector simulator from the, uh, the AR module in Qiskit. We already import AR here because we import all on a serial object. So here, simulator equals AR dot get backend and we want exactly state vector simulator please here we want uh, it's very important if you want to see the state vector don't do measurement because Hadamard gate creates superposition state and if you do a measurement the state modify we modify the state Okay, for that case, we modify the state. But for X gate, it's not important because uh, for the present, uh, for the preceding uh, lecture, we have one state. So if you do a measurement, it's not a problem because it's one, it's one state. But for other man gate, uh, it uh, don't do please uh, a measurement if we want to see state vector. Okay. So now. Uh, uh, we want to execute the quantum circuit QC using the simulator backend simulator and obtain the state vector of the resulting quantum state. So to do so, result equals execute QC comma backend equals simulator dot result and we know so we called our result by state ve state vector state vector equals result dot get state vector and now we want to print the state vector to the console so print state vector now we already seen uh, how Hadamard gate act actually by default that quantum qubit here is zero here in Qiskit is zero so actually the the state vector should be one over square root of two zero plus one but here look at how Qiskit show this result run as you can see this is our result let's explain that so here we have zero we have 0 0.7, 0 0.7, 1, etc. Plus 0j. This is actually a complex number, but here uh, it is a pure real number. Actually, this is our coefficient. And, and, we have zero point or comma it's not a problem seven zero seven etc plus zero j this is our result actually that represent what that represent because zero j is zero and zero j is zero so this is zero point uh, comma seven zero seven etc 0,707 etc. So this is our vector. 
Now, actually, this is if you want to write that by using the state the cat zero and cat one is zero point seven zero seven the cat zero plus the cat one. So this is our calculator. Let's verify that. If you want to calculate square root of two, so square root of two over two equals zero point seven zero seven. It's actually that result. So therefore, that equals square root of 2 over 2, 0, plus square root of 2 over 2, 1. And actually, this is the superposition state after applying the Hadamard gate to the ket 0. So, it's true. It's true. It's very beautiful, as you can see. And this is why we already seen the theory. So after that, uh, we, uh, we will uh, plot our uh, block sphere and histogram. So after printing our state vector, now we can do a measurement. Uh, actually, I can also uh, uh, show you uh, if we do a measurement, how the state vector ch changes. Uh, let's do this uh, th this remark. So we have our, we can uh, copy that and paste here. And uh, also, yes, also for Hadamard gate, we can reapply our Hadamard gate. And now we can measure. So QC measure. So measure the qubit in the QR register, in the QR register at uh, the index uh, zero because here the index by default is zero, and store the result in the classical register CR at index zero. Okay, so now we can uh, draw our circuit if, if you want. It's not a problem. We can draw our circuit. So QC dot uh, draw and uh, output uh, equals MPL and we have our circuit. So now if, for example, if I reuse that, look at to the result. We can't find that because we do a measurement. Did you see? Did you see? So after uh, the remark about measurement, now we can plot our block sphere. So to do that, uh, all the thing that we have to do is uh, using that state vector that we have here. But before to do that, it's very important to import the plot block multivector function from the Qiskit visualization tools. So from Qiskit dot tools dot visualization import plot block uh, now plot multi vector we execute that cell and we import that important thing now call the plot uh, uh, block multi vector function with the state vector as input to create a block sphere visualization so just to Right, plot block multi vector, and we want to plot exactly state vector, that state vector, and we run that cell. And actually, this is predictable. Why this is predictable? We already uh, see uh, in theory the block sphere. Actually, remember that in theory, 
so this is our block sphere the north pole represent so the north pole represents the qubit zero and the sorry and the south pole represents the qubit one and this is our y axis and x axis and actually that qubit exactly is uh, the plus qubit and the plus qubit is quite simply that preceding qubit that we have here that qubit that qubit this is the plus qubit which equals 1 over square root of 2 or uh, square root of 2 over 2 it's the same thing it's the same number square root of 2 over 2 0 plus square root of 2 over 2 1 so it is correct that result is correct this is beauty so uh, this is why we seen all that thing maths prerequisite and all that theory about quantum gates etc all that for this yes so now if you want now to plot our histogram now for histogram we should do a measurement we should do a measurement because in our histogram we have probabilities so to do a measurement it's very simple to do a measurement uh, so uh, here we have that we can copy that it's not a problem we can copy that here but it's not necessary but, but we can copy that f f if you want to to see uh, the things so we can do a measurement so measure the qubit in the qr register at index zero and store the result in the classical register cr at index zero uh, because uh, so here actually the default the first index is zero by default so here we have qc dot measure measure qr of zero comma cr of zero and uh, we can draw our circuit if you want so uh, qc dot draw by using uh, the the format uh, matplotlib so output mpl execute that and we have our circuit so if we want our histogram uh, it's uh, important to to uh, to run the quantum circuit on the on the simulator that simulator we want to use the KSM simulator backend and the number of shots is 1024 so we use that number so job equals execute our quantum circuit AR dot get backend and by using KSM simulator simulator and the number of short so shorts equals 1024 and uh, get the counts of the measurement outcomes from the job result so counts equals job dot result dot get counts and exactly qc of course because our quantum circuit equals qc just a variable 
you can use circuit if you want it's not a problem it's just a variable and now it's very important to import the plot histogram function from the Qiskit visualization tools so from Qiskit dot visualization import plot histogram and after that call the plot histogram function with the counts dictionary as input to create a histogram visualization so plot histogram counts and this is our result this is very beautiful here uh, this is our probability it's predictable why actually because it's just a simulator actually this is a very important analysis that that, that we we have to do now uh, so first why we have one uh, is exactly uh, 0 0.5 actually the probability is 1 over 2 why or 1 over 2 because in theory we already seen that actually this is our our state so we already seen that in theory the probability of a finding the cat zero here actually as you can see the probability for zero is one uh, nearly one over two and the probability of finding one is nearly one over two so the probability of finding the cat zero equals the, the square the, the the magnitude of that squared so this is that squared which equals uh, 1 over 2 so 0 0.5 and the same thing for the probability of finding the cat 1 this is the squared magnitude of that the squared magnitude of that which equals 1 over 2 because it's just a pure number I can do this directly but if we, if we have for example actually this is that complex conjugates time that but because complex conjugate is pure real number so uh, the, the complex conjugate of that is himself so this is 1 over 2 which equals that so actually why here we have that we don't have that exact number because the number of short actually imagine that before that if if I do one shot for example if I do one shot in general we find just one result <laughs> because this is probabilistic we find the first the the, the cube the, the one bit one because here it's classical if you have a qubit one if you do a measurement you it's like a projection to do the classic register so we find the the, the bit one the classical bit one uh, here if, if you do another if, if we run run so we have just one here ah yes zero <laughs> did you see because it's probabilistic another shot another another etc so if you do for example two look at here it's not very precise <laughs> did you see yes here i have a precision it's very magic magic but it's just a coincidence it's it's a coincidence actually it's just a coincidence because i have two uh, two i have one half it's not a coincidence because because we have just two shots so if you find the two the both of zero and one you find one for with the probability of one half and the other with the probability of one half it's now it's not a constant best but it's uh, it's law it's logic here uh, so if you do three measurements here uh, no uh, t t three shots so here uh, yes here it's very interesting it's not we don't have a very good precision here because the number of shots is uh, is not uh, great so as you can see this is because it's probabilistic did you see because it's probabilistic if you have four no 
Now imagine that if you have that number of shots, did you see? And now imagine that five, uh, a huge number, we should uh, wait, waiting, waiting and waiting. Yes, now it's very precise. We have very good precision now. But by default, so we use here that number of shots. Okay. I hope that you understand that. After that, we have another another qubit gate. Hi everyone. So now it's time for C not gate. First, it's important to import all necessary objects from Qiskit. So from Qiskit, import all. So all, we use a star if you want to import all necessary objects, which, me, which means classical register, a quantum register, classical register, quantum circuit, AR, execute, etc. So we execute that cell. Uh, and now, uh, because uh, CNOT gate is a two uh, qubit uh, gate, so here uh, we need two qubits. So we create a quantum register called QR with uh, two qubits. So quantum register with two qubits, and we can call that quantum register by Q. After that, we need also a classical register. That classical register, for example, called CR equals classical register with two classical bits, and we can call that by C. And after that, also, we need a, to create a quantum circuit with the quantum, with that quantum register and that classical register. That quantum circuit, for example, called QC, you can use another another, uh, another name, for example, circuit if you want, it's not a problem. So quantum circuit with quantum register and classical register CR. So now it's very interesting because we want to apply a CNOT gate. How we apply a CNOT gate? Before applying a CNOT gate, it's very important to know the control qubit and the target qubit. Here, the, the control qubit is the first quantum qubit, which means QR of zero, because here the index starts by zero. So, to do that, the syntax is like that. QC dot control not, and not is X, because C not gate is not, we can not, the nota another notation for not gate is X, so we have CX. So now, uh, we apply that C not gate with QR of zero as control qubit and QR of one as target. Okay. And now we can do a measurement because uh, for, for that part we want to to see uh, to plot uh, an histogram, a histogram. So here we measure the first qubit, qc dot, dot measure. We can measure the first qubit and store the outcome in the first classical bit, which means qr of zero and store the result and store the outcome in the first classical bit, which means CR of, uh, sorry, CR 
of uh, zero <coughs> and after we measure the second qubit uh, so the second qubit is uh, qr of one so measure the second qubit which means qr of one and store the, the outcome in the second classical bit which means CR of 1 okay and we can draw the circuit but that way of measurement because we have uh, here two qubit uh, it's uh, not a good way to do a measurement if we have for example a big number of qubit imagine if you have 20 qubit <laughs> it's uh, so you you write Q, qc measure etc uh, 20 times so uh, instead of of do this uh, it's important to use uh, actually a loop a loop so for i in range 2 because we have here 2 qubit 2 points and don't forget tab which means for space for space one two three four okay so we can delete that so here i i we can delete that and now it's interesting to draw our circuit if you want so to draw in that we use so qc draw the circuit because the, the we call the quantum circuit by qc so qc draw output equals mpl matplotlib and we can execute that Here we go, this is our circuit. So as you can see here, my, my control qubit is Q0 and the target qubit is Q1. So here we can predict the result. We can predict the result if you want. So let's do this. Let's do this. By default, here our quantum here, here our quantum qubit, that quantum qubit, and that quantum qubit by default in Qiskit is quantum is zero. So here, actually, we have we start with zero, and also the the co so this is the control and this is the target we start with we start with zero so this is the control qubit and that this is the target qubit so we apply a not gate here and of course we do a measurement here a measurement and uh, of course we use a classical register to do that measurement actually that two wires represent classical wire we have two so the first uh, beginning by the index zero and the second beginning by uh, and the second with index one so this is uh, so here we have one so we can predict actually we can predict that so uh, this is uh, because uh, here we have zero so the target qubit doesn't change so the result here is zero and here zero which means zero zero so if we want to predict what we have here 
what we have here classically is zero zero and here you need to know that uh, in uh, that zero zero this is a binary number in a classical way because here we project that uh, in that classical register and actually we have here a binary number and you know that uh, we write for if uh, we uh, and you know that we write a binary number start from right to the left so if you want to write that in classical way we start with that and after that but for qubit we start with that and with that so here actually that zero here is that zero in classical and that zero is that zero in classical okay that remark is a very important remark because in histogram if uh, for example in histogram if you have for example one zero in classical in classical that if you do a measurement we have actually zero one and not what and not uh, that okay so uh, we do our uh, prediction so now we can uh, plot our histogram to do that uh, we uh, execute uh, that uh, our quantum uh, circuit on the KSM simulator uh, backend with 1024 shots so job equals execute we want to execute our quantum circuit AR dot get backend and we want to use KSM simulator KSM simulator and the number of shorts is that and after that get the counts of the measurement outcomes so counts equals job dot result dot get counts and for exactly for our quantum circuit called QC okay and uh, before uh, plotting our histogram it's important to uh, to import that from Qiskit visualization so from Qiskit dot visualization import plot histogram and we can plot our histogram plot histogram and exactly counts then run that cell Did you see? This is our result. It's predictable. Our prediction was true. Our prediction is true. It's science. It's science. Did you see the uh, the uh, the relation between uh, uh, practic practice and theory? It's very interesting very interesting so after that we can see all other possibilities which means if you have for our first qubit one which means if the control qubit equals one and the target qubit equals zero etc
part 2 about CNOT gate. So here, if you want, for example, to start uh, by uh, a qubit, if, if the qubit q0 equals 1, what we can do? Here, by default, the qubit q0 equals 0, the cat 0. So, if you want to start by qubit 1, all the thing that we have to do is to apply an X gate to the first qubit. So, we can copy that copy just that control C and paste here. But before applying that C not gate, we must to apply an X gate to our qubit QR of zero. To do that is QC dot X QR of zero. If you want, uh, and uh, we can also add that measurement, uh, Ctrl-C, past. This is it. So we can run that cell. And as you can see, we apply our X gate to that first qubit. Now, if we want to verify, uh, no, not to verify, by, but to predict the result, the result is because we have here the qubit 1, here, here, the qubit 1, Uh, I can that actually here a barrier uh, after applying my X gate. So to do so, it's it's very simple. It's QC dot barrier, and we are on. Okay. So I so here I predict the result after that barrier. Uh, here we have uh, so after the barrier we have one qubit one here and uh, uh, for uh, q1 this is a qubit zero so the target is uh, the control is one and the target is uh, zero so here because the control qubit is one then the target qubit changes and the result is one the control qubit don't change ever never but here from zero that target qubit changes to one so we had one zero and the result is one one so by plotting histogram the result it's predictable we must find one one so let's plot our histogram uh, so here the job uh, is uh, so it's like that cell actually we already seen that so here uh, the job job equals execute our quantum circuit AR dot get backend and by using KSM simulator KSM simulator and the number of shots is that and counts equals 
job.result dot get counts and exactly QC. We already import our uh, histogram from uh, visualization, but it's important to, to import that. If you don't import that, you can find an error. You must import that. So actually, imagine that we don't have that line. We must add that line here. Okay. So plot his to gram, and I want counts. Run. As you can see, this is our result, and it was predictable. Here, the probability it's not it, it is 1.000, which means one. And actually, because we have we have one two qubit here, the coefficient here is one, so the probability is one, and it was predictable. Hi everyone, so uh, we're still with the synod gate. Uh, in this part, we want to print our state vector and plot our block sphere. Uh, first, it's important to import from Qiskit all necessary objects. So from Qiskit, import all execute that and here uh, because i want to just uh, print state vector it's not important to add a measurement actually don't do this because a measurement modify the state vector don't do this okay so here create a quantum register with two qubit qr equals quantum register with two qubit and called Q for example and also we create a quantum circuit called QC quantum circuit associated with the quantum register QR QR and now we add a C naught gate to our quantum circuit called QC uh, and here we use uh, our uh, control qubit is qr of 0 and the target qubit is qr of 1. So to do this, the syntax is like that, syntax, qc.cx qr of 0, the control and the target is qr of 1. And we can draw our circuit. So draw the quantum circuit QC using matplotlib. So QC dot draw output equals MPL. This is it. This is our circuit. And after that, I want to visualize that actually it's uh, we can predict that by using what we already seen actually we have here our circuit is like that here by default the first qubit is zero in Qiskit the second qubit So, because the control qubit equals 0, the result should be 0, 0, which means our qubit is 0, 0. So, here we already seen that if you want the matrix notation for 0, 0 is 1, 0, 0, 0. So, here in, in Qiskit, we should see that 1 plus 0j 
0 plus 0 j, 0 plus 0 j, 0 plus 0 j, 0 j. Here j in case case is i, the imaginary number i. So here is 1, 0, 0, 0. Let's do this here. To do this, it's important to set up a state vector simulator as the back end for running the circuit. To do this, to do this, simulator equals AR dot get back end state vector simulator and execute the circuit on the state vector simulator backend and retrieve the result result equals execute quantum circuit backend equals simulator dot result and retrieve the state vector of the circuit after execution state vector equals result dot get state vector and after that we can print in print the final state vector of the circuit so print state vector test that execute yes it's very beautiful as you can see it's it was predictable that one zero 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 is quite simply one zero zero it's ASMR. Wow. Very interesting. Very interesting. Now, if we want to plot our block sphere, it's important to uh, import the plot block multivector function from the Qiskit visualization tools. So from Qiskit dot dot tools dot visualization import plot block multi vector we can run that okay and plot block uh, we, we should have here two block sphere a block sphere for zero and another block sphere for zero so the result here is also predictable because I have the cat the cat zero zero which equals zero tensor product zero for that zero we have a block sphere like that with zero and for that we should have another block sphere with zero okay so Michi vector state vector run that and as you can see the beauty of science the be how it is beautiful it was predictable it was predictable Hi everyone, now it's time for swap gate. Uh, so here uh, swap gate is a two qubit gate. So we need uh, a quantum register with two qubit actually. Uh, our routine is uh, to uh, import from Qiskit uh, all necessary objects. We already seen that and explain that by commentary so import all run that cell 
I need a quantum register with two qubit, two qubit called, for example, Q. That is optional. We can do this if you want. And here uh, I want uh, to uh, to show you the effect of uh, swap gate. So we can add here a commentary a commentary here called before before swap gate. Here uh, I want to plot uh, a block sphere. It's a very interesting way to see the effect, how the uh, two qubits, uh, how uh, uh, the value of two qubit swaps uh, swap. Uh, so here uh, I need just a quantum circuit. So for instance, I don't need a quantum uh, a classical register because uh, for block sphere we don't need a classical register actually because classical register we need a classical register if we want to do a measurement and remember for if you want to print your state vector it's uh, don't do please don't do a measurement because a measurement modify your state so just do this if you want to plot your block uh, sphere or to show just state vector. So here uh, I need just a quantum circuit with the register QR with the, with the quantum register QR. So I use QC quantum register no uh, quantum circuit with the quantum register QR and here uh, because uh, I want to to see the difference before applying swap gate and after applying swap gate because here by default both of two qubits uh, of two qubits uh, are equals uh, zero so here I need to apply uh, an X gate to one of uh, those two qubits. For example, I can apply an X gate to the first qubit. So QC dot X QR of zero. Then here we apply an X gate to the first qubit QR. QR of zero. I can add these here a, a, a barrier. So QC dot barrier. And after that, I can draw my circuit. So QC dot draw by using the math math plotlib method output equals MPL I, and we can execute that. So here I want uh, to uh, plot my block sphere. So I need. Uh, uh, my simulator simulator equals simulator equals AR. We already explained that in the preceding part backend and I need here state vector simulator. We can execute that. Actually, you can do this uh, in one cell, but uh, me, I do that to explain you uh, each uh, step. Each step. Uh, here, I want that my result. Result, I want. Uh, uh, so, result equals uh, here execute my quantum circuit. And backend equals my simulator. Backend equals simulator. Dot result. We already seen that, okay? 
we already explain all that and the state vector equals result dot get state vector I can execute that good and now uh, because I want to plot my block sphere, I need to import that. So import so from Qiskit dot tools dot visualization import plot block multi vector we can execute that so we import our plot block multi vector and after that we can plot in our block sphere so plot block multi vector and i want that state vector I can execute that and this is my result it's predictable the first qubit of course here the result is after the barrier here yes so after the X we have a qubit 1 here so Q0 the qubit 0 is 1 it's predictable and that qubit by default is zero so it's predictable so now the thing are going to be interesting before uh, because we we want to apply here our swap gate so after swap gate what we have we have what uh, just uh, copy that by using control C remember that I use Jupyter Live this is a, by using Anaconda this is a new notebook so copy just that and we can add here after the X gate we add a swap gate from from Q0 to Q1 so here uh, yes, uh, so I want to add after the barrier, after the barrier, because I want to add that after the barrier. The barrier is just a way to explain new things. It's not, uh, it doesn't interfere here for our state, etc just to see things very clearly so after the barrier we we can apply swap gate to so from qr 0 to qr 1 and we can execute that after that if you want to see the difference all the thing that we have to do is to uh, re-execute that circuit because it's different to that so we can copy that part and to plot in our block sphere copy that part and after executing you can see the difference did you see it's predictable we have the effect of swap we have that effect so look at here so here before applying before applying the swap gate and here after applying the swap gate so uh, as you can see that swap gate swaps the value of two qubit of two qubits in the quantum state as you can see 
you can use uh, now a histogram if you want to use a histogram we need now a classical register so just uh, like uh, always you just to uh, copy that cell uh, that part of code past here and we need just to add a classical register called CR equals classical register with two classical bits and called C for example uh, but here uh, our quantum circuit with QR and our classical register and after swap gate we do a measurement so qc dot measure actually here uh, we don't need a loop because i by default the measure it's it's from zero to, it's from qr of zero to cr of zero and qr of one to cr of one so all the thing that we have to do is qc dot measure qr cr we already told you that uh, we can do a loop, but it's just to, to show you, imagine that uh, you, you want to do a specific measure from a certain qubit to another classical uh, bit, for example, or to do a certain part. If you want to do that, you need to, to use a loop. So here, this is uh, my circuit. And after that, uh, here we we have a job show job execute because i want to plot my histogram execute our quantum circuit using ar dot get backend and using KSM simulator KSM simulator and the number of shorts equals 1000 24 counts equals job dot result dot get counts qc and we want to import from cascade visualization plot histogram so from cascade dot visualization import plot histogram like that and plot histogram of course and exactly counts so here uh, there is uh, an important remark here actually the result is uh, 0 1 the qubit 0 1 exactly but for my histogram the result is 1 0 because we already explained that for histogram is from uh, we begin with right to the left because uh, a binary number for histogram you have actually a binary number because we do a measurement in a classic register. Did you see this is one zero? As you can see, if you have qubit zero one in in a histogram, you have one zero. Okay, we already explained that. You should uh, see uh, the preceding part. So this is all the thing that we have about swap gate. After swap gate, we have what we called we have CCNOT gate, which means Toffoli gate. So now it's time for Toffoli gate, also called CCNOT gate. Uh, our routine is uh, to import from Qiskit all important object. And here, because uh, Toffoli gate, uh, we already seen that Toffoli gate is a three quantum, uh, it's a three uh, qubit gate. So here we need uh, three 
a register with three qubits. That register called, for example, QR, quantum register with three qubits, and called, for example, Q. Here, uh, I want just to show you the the block sphere. It's very interesting. Uh, here I need, the, of course, our my quantum circuit. So QC equals quantum circuit with just QR. For instance, we we don't need a measurement, so we don't need a classical register. But if you want to plot a histogram, we need our classical register. The syntax, if you want to apply your Toffoli gate, Toffoli gate is also called CC not gate. So the syntax is CCX. So QC dot CC, CCX. CCX for CC not gate. And here CC not gate, we have two control qubit. The two control qubit is the first qubit, QR of zero, QR of one. Both of those two are our control qubits. And the target qubit is the last one, which means QR of two. And we can draw our circuit. Draw by using matlab at plotlib output equals mpl and we run that so this is our toffoli gate now actually by default the first qubit the second qubit and the third qubit are zero so here zero 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 and because the first and the second qubit which is uh, the control qubits are equal to zero, then the target qubit doesn't change. Therefore, the final result should be zero, zero, zero. Uh, we can show that, of course, by plotting our block sphere. So from, from Qiskit dot tools dot visualization import plot block multi vector our simulator is ar get backend so simulator equals ar dot get backend state vector simulator execute that Result equals execute our quantum circuit backend equals simulator dot result and state vector equals result dot get state vector and finally plot in our block sphere plot block metric vector state vector and run that cell there is an error we uh, I forget something here it's not about forgetting I don't execute that and now it work and this is our block sphere as you can see the first qubit is zero the second qubit is zero the third qubit is zero so it's good it was predictable now we can play with that uh, if uh, we don't, uh, if we have actually, if we have here zero and one, the that qubit doesn't change, but that qubit changes 
only and if only if that qubit and that qubit equals zero. So to do uh, equals one, equals one. That qubit, that changes if and only if that qubit equals one and that qubit equals one. So to do this, we apply an X gate to that gate, to that qubit and to this qubit. So before applying our Toffoli gate, I can add a NOT gate, an X gate to QR0 and QR1. So QC dot X QR of 0 if you have a many 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 bit a qubit if you want to, to apply next gate for a huge number you should use a loop so here we can do this and this is my circuit and actually the pre this is predictable because here now we should have one 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 because so here before applying before applying Toffoli gate we have one one zero and because the first and the second are one then the third changes from zero to one from zero to one execute that so as you can see it was predictable and we have one 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 this is what we called beauty this is what we called beauty now uh, we can plot our histogram it's interesting to plot our histogram because here actually we read here one 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 but for histogram it reads one 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 and to show you that i need to have here one one zero if you want to have here one one zero other thing that i do is to apply an x gate to that qubit before applying the Toffoli gate which means qc dot x qr of 2 and now actually the result should be because that 1 1 1 both of control qubit are 1 therefore the target qubit changes from 1 to 0 from 1 to 0 so if I execute that I have 1 1 uh, 0 1 1 0 as you can see so it was predictable and it's correct but here I have 1 1 0 but for histogram the number is the binary digit is 0 1 1 so uh, the the goal is to do that now we can plot our histogram but to do that before to plot in our histogram we should add a measurement so here before adding a measurement we need a classical register but here with three classical bits because i want to measure that so my classical register cr equals classical register with three classical bits called c for example and i can after that i want to measure all that so i can copy uh, the, that part here and for quantum circuit we add our classical register and we do a measurement you see i don't need here a loop measure qr comma cr and we can execute that this is our circuit quantum circuit and now we can plot our histogram to do that job 
equals execute our quantum circuit AR dot get dot get backend and use KSM simulator and the number of shorts equals that number and counts equals job dot result dot get counts QC and it's important to import from Qiskit visualization plot histogram so from Qiskit dot visualization import plot histogram and we can plot our histogram and of course counts and actually before running that it's predictable because here we have one one zero but in histogram uh, the histogram uh, in histogram we have 0 1 1 we already explained that because this is a binary digit in histogram we do a measurement by using that classical register so here we have from we have that first which means we have we must have 0 1 1 because a binary digit we read a binary digit from right to left so we have that here one after one and after the last is zero okay so we can run that it was predictable it is very beautiful you have zero one one but here for cat for cat we have one one zero Thank you for watching. After that, we have a very interesting thing called Superdance Coding. Entanglement and bare state. This is one of the most strange thing about quantum mechanics, and we can apply that in quantum computing. Imagine that you have two states. An up and up, for example. If the first, if, if one of those states changes, for example, from up to down, the other state doesn't change. This is a very intuitive thing, of course. But imagine that we have a certain connection between those two states if one of those two states changes the other changes automatically this is what we call the entanglement it is not we don't need actually a physical connection between of those two states even though imagine that we, we have our state in earth and other states in earth those two states can be entangled entangled so the distance cannot change entanglement so now if you want to create our our entangled state called also bare state so here we need actually two states which means we need zero and another state called zero first we apply the Hadamard gate to the first state and you know, after applying the Hadamard gate, if you apply, remember that if you apply the Hadamard gate 
to the k0, the result is square root of 2 over 2, k0 plus k1. So here, the state that we have here, the qubit that we have here is square root of 2 over 2, 0 with that 0, and 1 with that 0. So we have 0, 0, plus 1, 0. Because here h acts to that qubit and not to that qubit. So we have 0 and 1. Actually, that state, it's not an entangled state. Why? Because this is not entangled qubit, because we can factorize by, by the ket, that ket zero. Because we can do this, zero plus one, tensor product, zero so if you want to create bare state which means entangled state it's very simple all the thing that we have to do is to add a c naught after that a c naught gate So here, after our C0, the state is square root of 2 over 2. Because here the control qubit equals 0, the target doesn't change. So we have 0, 0. And here, because the control qubit equals 1, the target qubit changes. So we have 1, 1. And here, actually, we cannot do this here, so this is an entangled state. We cannot write that by using something 0 plus 1 tensor product 0 or 1. It's impossible to factorize. So this is entangled qubit, entangled state, of course. So, if you want to summarize, the bed state is, we denote the first bed state by phi plus, which equals square root of 2 over 2, 0, 0 plus 1, 1. And if we want to create that bed state, we start from 0, 0, and we apply the Hadamard gate plus C0 gate. And the circuit about that is like that. The Hadamard gate, and after Hadamard gate, of course, we have C0. zero zero and of course here the result is square root of two over two zero zero plus one one now it's time for one of the application about quantum computing called super dense coding uh, so we have Alice and Bob, and Alice want to send a message to Bob, a classical message called B1, B0. To do that, we need two parties who wish to communicate, which means here Alice and Bob, two entangled qubits. Each party has half of the entangled pair. So here, if you want to send that two classical uh, bit, uh, we need the one qubit one qubit for Alice, because here two entangled qubits, each party has half of the entangled pair. So here Alice has one qubit and Bob has the other part. 
a quantum channel to transmit a qubit of course and a two-bit message a two-bit we need a two-bit message we need that information we need to, to transmit that two-bit message so, so we need to know uh, that two-bit message step one is create an entangled pair of qubits actually this is an application of entanglement uh, so we already seen how create uh, an entangled pair of qubits this is how we create that we use a hadamard gate and after hadamard gate we use a CNOT gate so before we have the get zero zero and after we have entangled the first bare state which means square root of two over two zero zero plus square root of two over two one one step two distribute entangled qubits to alice and bob so as you can see alice has half of the entangled pair of qubits and the same thing for bob now step three alice performs operations on her qubit depends on what classical message that he want uh, he wants to uh, to send uh, to uh, bob uh, if you want a uh, classical message zero zero the gate to apply is none if you want zero one not gate uh, one zero z gate one one not and z so if you want to send uh, the zero zero the we don't apply any gate and the result after that is uh, uh, the bell state as you can see if you want to send zero one zero one the gate to apply is not gate before applying that not gate the state is that but what about after not gate actually that we apply the not gate to the up qubit so zero to zero under the first one and the result he is the one the zero becomes one and the one becomes zero if you want one zero the gate to apply is Z gate and the state after that is recall that Z zero equals zero doesn't change for the for the for, for the the, the the qubit zero z1 equals actually minus one we already seen the the action of the gate z the result is that as you can see the minus because we apply the z to one and the result is minus one if you want one one the gate to apply here the gates to apply is not and z gate first we apply the not gate to the up gate and zero becomes one the same thing for the other we apply the not to the up gate and the result is zero after that we apply the z gate to the one and the result is minus one we apply the z gate to zero and the, the result is zero step four now alice sends her qubit to bob and bob inverts entanglement if you want to invert entanglement we apply c naught and after c naught we apply hadamard gate the inverse take the example of one one this is just an example we can we can do that for for the other uh, gate so here for that example gate to apply is not and z gate first we apply the not gate the result is that the zero becomes one the one becomes zero we apply that to the up qubit of course after we apply z after applying z the result is minus one zero plus zero one because one becomes minus one zero is zero and the result is square root of two zero one minus one zero after we apply the c naught gate so for c naught gate here that qubit doesn't change because the control equals zero but that 
qubit changes because the control qubit equals 1. So from 0, we have 1. Now the thing becomes interesting after applying the Hadamard gate. Actually, Hadamard gate creates superposition state. So here we apply Hadamard gate to that, to the up qubit, to the up qubit, which means 0 and 1. If we apply it to that 0, the result is square root of 2 over 2, 0 plus square root of 2 over 2, 1. But don't forget that one. Then we have square root of 2 over 2, 0, 1 plus 1, 1. We just add that one here and here and here. Actually, this is square root of 2 over 2 is here. We ignore it for, for, for the moment. And what about that state? We apply h to that up qubit. And the result, if you apply that h gate to, the, to that qubit, the result is square root of 2 over 2, 0, minus square root of 2 over 2, 1. We have minus. And don't forget that one. Therefore, this is square root of 2 over 2, 0, 1, that one, minus 1, 1. Then this is the result. And we have here a common factor, which means square root of 2 over 2. So we factor by, by that number, and the result is 2 over 4. After that, we have just to calculate that, develop the calculation minus with minus equals plus. 0, 1 minus 0, 1 equals 0. 1, 1, qubit 1, 1 plus 1, 1 equals 2, 1, 1. And the result is 1, 1, quite simply. So as you can see, we have our qubit 1, 1. So the result after that is 1, 1. Now, step 5, Bob measures his qubits. Remember that this is a, an example for, not for 1, 1. We can, so we do a measurement. We measure the first, the up qubit. And of course, the 1 qubit is for classical message B1, not B0. Pay attention. And we measure the second, and the result is, so this is the B0, the classical bit B0. And finally, we obtain our classical message B1, B0, which equals 1, 1. So here, because actually we have 1 qubit, and that 1 qubit is 1, 1, the coefficient is 1. So here, the probability of finding that qubit 1, 1 is 1, which means 100%. So then, the, the classical bit B1 equals 1, and the same thing for classical bit B0. And finally, this is our result, and Bob measure B1, B0 equals 1, 1, and Ali sent that message, and this is what we called super dense coding. Hi everyone, so now it's time for super dense coding and using Qiskit. We already seen theory about Qiskit, uh, about super dense coding, and it's very important to see that before see before seeing that Qiskit code about super dense coding. It's very important because for me, you already seen that, so uh, I, I don't explain uh, uh, here the theory. Uh, so, uh, f first of all, uh, it's very impor important to import from Qiskit all necessary objects, etc. So, from Qiskit import, port all, which means quantum register, classical register, AR quantum circuit execute etc so now here we need two quantum register because i want to send our message so here i want to send that first message zero zero so here 
I need a quantum register with, with two qubits and a classical register with two qubits. So the declaration is like that. So QR equals quantum register two comma Q. Uh, we call that Q, it's not uh, important, actually we can just use that if you want. And we need also a classical register because here I, I want to do a measurement actually uh, and we want to use a histogram so we need to do a measurement. So CR equals classical, classical register, two classical bits and called C for example. And here we go, we have our quantum circuit with that quantum register and that classical register. So quantum circuit equals quantum circuit with QR and classical register like that. And here we want to create our entanglement entangled state. If we want to to create entangled state, we use Hadamard gate, and after Hadamard gate, we use a CNOT gate. So we apply our Hadamard gate for the first qubit, which means QC dot H, QR of zero, and after that we apply an a CNOT gate uh, from QR of zero. QR of zero is the control qubit and the target qubit is QR of 1. And because here we we want the, that first message 0, 0, so gate to apply any gate. We don't apply any gate if we want to send 0, 0, for example. So between, we inverse entangled state by using first C0 and Hadamard. But, but between those two uh, processes we we don't have any gate so after that qc dot cx qr of zero qr of one after that we apply a hadamai gate qr of zero like that so between this and this we don't apply any gate actually so here we do a measurement qc dot qc dot measure so here the order is not important because i want to send just zero zero but if you want to send for example zero one for measurement we uh, we use so w w for measure we do qr of zero cr of zero we inverse the order because by default if you want if you just write qr of cr then we use qr of zero to cr of zero and qr of one to cr of one this is the order by default but here because I want I want just zero zero the order is not important there is a problem here oh yes that Q is not defined so we can yes it works so now we execute our job so job equals execute QC uh, AR dot get backend and we use KSM simulator KSM simulator and the number of shorts here equals 1024 and counts equals job dot result dot get counts QC so from we want to visualize our histogram so from kiskit dot visualization import plot 
histogram and after that we plot our histogram and exactly counts wait no 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 we want it is histogram so we run that and this is our result so it's very beautiful as you can see we just sent the message zero zero so now if you want to send that zero one all the thing that we have to do is modify between this thing and this thing so we add an x gate an x gate to qr of zero so to do that it's qc dot x qr of zero but please here for measurement uh, okay let's do that but we can see a, a quite a problem here so execute that and after that execute that look at here me i want zero one but here i have one zero the solution is to modify that so here for measurement qr of zero and cr of one and qc dot measure qr of one cr of zero execute execute and as you can see we resolve that problem now if we want one zero all the thing that we have to do is to apply instead of x z gate execute that execute and we have one zero now if you want but pay attention the measurement should be like that if you want one one the measurement is not important to order because one one so here we apply not and z gate so qc dot x of qr of zero execute that and execute that and we have one one so this is our code about super dense coding it's very interesting this is one of the of the application about quantum computing thank you for watching